viewers so far. We're rolling. Thanks for coming in, brother. I appreciate your time. Yeah. Mike Britton's my guest, elected first term, well, as some of the media would call you, a junior counselor. <laughs> uh, City of St. Catharines. Um, elected in St. George's Ward. First time around, too, eh? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. There was eight people running that time. It was the most contested ward in the city. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you were a Rick Dykstra ticket guy? No? No. No. You know what? Um, I didn't really know Rick that much at that point, I'll be honest, but I got to know him once I was uh, on city council. <laughs> yeah. So. I just, uh, I thought he had a ticket pretty much, and he had a whole bunch of guys that he seemed to be supporting. And uh, and so you, you were saying that, what, you didn't have an affiliation? He didn't no. give you a helping hand? Because it seemed like everyone that it was associated with him got got picked up, got elected, except for uh, maybe Joe on Port Luzi there. Okay, let's just make sure. Okay, so we're good. Sounding good. Looks good. Well, it looks like a couple of long, lanky, awkward-looking dudes playing uh, pretend DJ. So, anyway, I'm Jim Fannin. Welcome to the Jim Fannin Show. This is the new edition of the Jim Fannin Show. We are uh, backing it up with another copy here, so we'll get some good audio. But um, forgive me, Facebook peeps out there. It's just the uh, microphone off the the phone going, so that's all you guys get. But uh, we'll upload it to YouTube to the Jim Fannin Show page. You can find us on Twitter at Jim Fannin Show, at Jim Fannin, uh, on every podcast platform, basically, that's out there, iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, all that kind of stuff. So, uh, And if you want to interact with the show, we're kind of watching the live feed here, so we'll take your comments and questions. If you have some, you can just chime in on the live Facebook feed, and then catch us later on the podcast if you want to check the audio. So, Mike Britton's my guest, uh, as introduced already, first-term counselor in St. Catharines. Um, Mike, yeah, why don't you just start out by telling us a little bit about, like, who you are, uh, what you kind of believe in, what kind of guy you are, and I, I'm more interested in, like, if I'm if I'm hanging with Mike Britton, yeah. what personality type do I have? What, <laughs> what are my morals look like? What do, uh, What's oh, important man. to you as far as friends go when you're cool. hanging out in their basement like we were talking about? Yeah, well, I'm going to be honest. Uh, we talked a little bit before we turned on the camera about being a 24-7 counselor or not, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, whether that's a, a thing. And most of my days are like long, full of council days. You know, there isn't there isn't a lot of that. You're uh, treating like this like a full time job, pretty much. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, my other my other side gig is kind of very flexible, so I can spend more time on on uh, council. But as far as like hanging out in a basement watching uh, hockey, that's usually what we're doing. Right. I'll go over to some friend's house, watch some hockey. You know, they'll be drinking. Leaf I'll fan. be drinking. Uh, water <laughs> you don't drink <laughs> no no but uh i just want to clarify i'm always skeptical of uh, oh yeah the kettle ones in that <laughs> glass as usual i'm always skeptical of people that don't do drugs or drink they always look yeah. like it makes me go whoa, whoa what's wrong with you what do you mean you get a problem yeah i think it started because i was cheap in high school i was like how are you getting money for this expensive alcohol my word <laughs> but uh and then i was just like well i can't break the streak now it's been you know Right, but uh, so yeah. never drank, never tasted it. No, never, well, never got it. Never had it. a, never had a desire to. Well, good for you. Many yeah. people struggle with it. So, and uh, are, you, uh, are you a coffee drinker? I recently kind of got into. I kind of fallen back too after twenty five years of uh, abstinence from that yeah. evil drug. But that's a drug too. So we'll get you on that. Yeah, he uses coffee relentlessly. <laughs> He's an addict. Mike Britton, coffee <laughs> user. <laughs> So uh, on city council, uh, I'm just going to help you introduce yourself here. Right. Chair of the Economic Sustainability Committee, uh, Vice Chair of the Budget Committee. Now, that must be interesting. We can talk a little bit about that. Uh, Niagara District Airport Commission, uh, Niagara Regional Transportation Steering Committee, and Chair of the 19, uh, 2017 Youth Forum Planning Committee. Uh, outside council, you manage properties. That should be a pretty good gig. There's not too many people in Niagara property managing, I don't think. Um, Habitat for Humanity Salvage Team, uh, Central Community Church Volunteer. I know that because I've seen you around quite a bit there. 
Junior Chamber, JCI, Junior Chamber International member and Toastmasters member. Wow. Yeah. So how many speeches you got under your belt at Toasties? I kind of just joined a few months ago, so yeah. I've done two. I did two oh, right in a row. You did your icebreaker? I did my icebreaker, which was and fun. And it's like a five-minute about, like, who... Uh, Who's yeah. Bill uh, Bill here? There's my first one. Mike Britton, Mike Britton, yeah. Mike Britton, not Bill. Hey, Bill Britton, if should've, you're watching. Yeah. Sorry. Should have worn a name tag. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, you got the icebreaker done, and then uh, what was your second one? Um, the second one, I actually talked about. Um, well, sorry, I'm just trying to think. So I did my Scottish trip. I did a tour around Scotland a few years ago. Okay. I talked about that, but I actually think that was in my icebreaker. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, I did it on uh, Freemasonry. That's what it was. My second one was on Freemasonry. Really? Yeah. Are you a Freemason? I am, yeah. Wow. Yeah. I, I don't know anything about that. <laughs> I'm kind of surprised. Well, then I won't bore you with it. But, uh, yeah, no, my uh, It's my just another cult, right, basically? <laughs> I wouldn't call it a, a cult. Term, but, okay. um, yeah, it's a, it's a brotherhood. But I, I, I love history. Um, part of the introduction that you skipped there was that I have a degree in classics, classical studies, ancient mm -hmm. Greece and Roman. Um so I love history, and there's a lot of tradition. There's a lot of history to that. The oldest uh, fraternity in the world. Not fraternity as in, like, frat house partying, you know, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, brotherhood. And so my grandfather was a Mason. My great-grandfather was a Mason. So I figured I, I really wanted to get involved. Cool. And I'd only, I've only been one. I actually um, went in maybe a week before I got on council. So it was really, really a life-changing, like, week. I, I turned 24. <laughs> okay. That um, was my first election, too. Yeah, so. I, I turned 24. I got elected at city council, and I became a mason all in, like, a period of two weeks. Wow. So Like a rebirth. <laughs> so, again, let's get back to I'll let you just introduce yourself and your personality type and what what makes you tick. And uh, so like, tell us about uh, who Mike Britton is. Well, you're probably not going to like this answer, but, like, a lot of what I do is politics. Like, a lot of what I do is politics, like yeah. getting out there. And that doesn't offend me at all. In the community, I, I can't look say, away. Like, I cannot look away. Man. Yeah, like a lot of my personality is is that what you see, like out in, in, out in the the community, like mm -hmm. going to events, uh, um, the committees, you know, that I'm sitting on. Like that's that's a lot of what I'm doing, and mm -hmm. I enjoy it. Like that's the thing is I like what I do, so I don't mind that it's all, almost all encompassing. <laughs> right. So yeah. So then if you're just to put bullet points, let's say you're we're doing a hey, a dating profile. Maybe I can help you with that. You're <laughs> yeah. talking about yesterday how you're yeah. still single, Women, you yeah. don't want to be that way. Uh so, you know, I I wrote not a dating profile because I'm scared to be seen online even. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when I was single many years ago, I uh I I jumped on plenty of fish or whatever, which is probably okay. the, you know, the bottom feeding of the dating sites i don't know i've never it, i've never free. tried so but. i jumped on i made this profile and which was hilarious i had the best time writing this profile and i think i i switched it over it's my about me now on my facebook which is <laughs> probably about five years old That's because it still talks recycling about recycling yeah yeah something just uh it talks about my mother and what, whatever when she was still alive and stuff like that so I had the greatest time running that. And then uh, my babysitter, one of my babysitters from when I used to live on Two's Place in St. Catharines, I was probably, well, we moved there in grade four. So um, Sue sends me a message. Oh, I didn't ever expect to see you out here. I'm like, delete account right <laughs> away. You didn't like the babysitter thing? The stigma. The... No, no. I, I love the babysitter thing. But <laughs> the stigmatism that goes along with the online dating. So I, I never did it. But uh, anyways, I have a habit of sidetracking myself. Uh, so, yeah, just give me your bullet points. I am, uh, if you're just going to say Christian, mm -hmm. I am pro-life. I am Political, I finished that. I don't know if I put us. those things on a dating profile. No, no, no. Man, no but like just so boring for our listeners, because you yeah. know, I, I like this format from the standpoint that one, we don't have to check our watch and go, oh, and then yeah. talk, listen to a sponsor. Also, I can talk shit about the sponsors and not fear <laughs> retribution from uh, the higher ups. I was say, in, you've uh, never had any experience in with the that, eh? in the corp. Uh, yeah, I got a little experience with that, and uh, so I, I like this format because one, I think that uh, local media has. Um, had a little uh, problem lately with objective local issue coverage. And, and you can't do any of this type of thing in the paper. I mean, yeah. you getting to know someone like this just is impossible in, mm -hmm. in print. And then when it, it, when it uh, compares to uh, terrestrial radio, you get a break every nine minutes, long commercials, that, yeah. that flow gets broken up. So 
we got a whole lot of time to go in depth, so I, I don't mind if you just take the time to, to wind out. And, and it, I think it will help uh, the electorate, which is important to you if you're running next time, uh, or even just people that are interested in following politics, maybe not even mm -hmm. in St. Catharines, want to see what St. Catharines are up to or what Mike Burton stands for. Yeah. Then uh, we can, we have a chance to go get really personal here and, and talk about whatever mm. we want in depth. So that's uh, kind of why I'm doing yeah. this, and uh, you know, it's it's a form of self expression, obviously for me too. But I'm a political addict. Uh, I'm trying to uh, I'm trying to heal myself. <laughs> um, Don't do that. It, well, Come join it, us. Jim. You know what? It, it it really takes away from paying the bills for me, right? Yeah. So. I can't, I'm not selling houses when I'm sitting with Mike Britton for two hours <laughs> in my makeshift studio down here. I don't mind if um, you like do a few, you know, shots to the camera. Uh, Ricochet is getting one all the time because <laughs> I love their water and I just give them free plugs all the time. So thank you, Ricochet Water. You changed my life. Yeah. I never drank a RO again. Um, but uh, yeah, just spend a little bit, you know, more going in depth about who yeah. you are and what's important to you. Well, so I'll actually tell you a story. We started off talking a little bit about uh, Rick Dykstra and I've got a story about him and I got a story that actually involves you. Okay. Um, I've never told you this story, but it's kind of an interesting one. So um, in 2006, I was in high school. I was actually in civics class. C chord? C chord. I was a no. C chordian. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was in all the plays. I got a strong and... connection with the C chord kids. <laughs> yeah, I was in the plays. I was in the. I have no musical talent, but I was there. You know? Okay, yeah. But um, anyway, so I was in civics class in 2006, and uh, as part of civics class, there was the federal election going on that year. Right. And we were all assigned a political party right. um, that year, and I was assigned to the liberal party uh, in my class. And out of the groups, we were to elect a leader from amongst us, right? So I actually became leader of the Liberal Party in my the grade 10 civics class. Oh, okay. And each of the leaders were able to go meet their candidate because the candidates were coming to my high school for a debate. Now, a lot of the names in the 2006 election are quite familiar even still today. So we had the incumbent Liberal, which was Walt Lestuka, so that was who I got to meet. Um, there was the conservative, Rick Dykstra, running for the first time federally. There was the NDP, Jeff Birch, was the NDP Boo, candidate. NDP, <laughs> Birch. And there was a Green f <laughs> candidate guy. Uh, yeah, that guy was some awesome. Jim <laughs> Fannin or something like that. So, um, yeah, that's just actually kind of my first exposure to, uh, to politics in general. Um, and I, we all got to go to the staff room and meet the, you know, your candidate. And I don't know if, I can't remember if Walt Lestuka was late or... I don't know what happened, but I ended up talking with Rick Dykstra. It was the very first time I ever met Rick. Wow. In 2006. Okay. I was 16 years old. Uh-huh. Um, and I chatted with him, and and I'll, I'll be honest, I was quite impressed, and especially when we got into the debate, um, because this Green Party guy, he kept bringing up uh, legalization of marijuana uh, oh, all, did the I? Yeah. Okay. all the time. And so the kids went nuts, right? Well, I know how to play to the kids, for sure. <laughs> exactly. But it's so one of our best policies, yeah, if I, I can say our, like I'm still at the party. <laughs> But um, I'm pretty sure uh, I'm actually pretty sure you won the student vote that yeah, year. I did. Yeah, you did. One win. of the few things I've ever won in <laughs> politics ever. So there, you're elected at Secor. <laughs> I was elected but, at Secor. Um, anyway, so what I was actually impressed about Rick, not not a shot at you, but um, he was, you know, the students were not impressed that um, he wasn't for the legalization of marijuana, but like he stuck to his principles. He was like, like this is what I believe. This is what my party believes, and and he stuck to it, even though. You know, it was not popular in that school, that was for sure. And I was quite impressed by that, mm -hmm. you know. Um, Did, is that yeah. what made you conservative, or do you think you already had conservative yeah. values? To be honest, I was 16. I didn't have any, like, political values at that point. I was not right. involved in okay. any way. Um, I, I think it had an impression on me. I think that the whole debate, the whole experience, the whole watching of that got me involved in, in give you a little bit yeah. of a hunger for it or exactly even a tweaked an interest in you that yeah. you didn't know you had yeah like uh before that like i really i'll say i was not involved um, family political not at all not okay. at all they uh they used to be liberal then they flipped conservative like they're not you know mm. out um out there you know campaigning or anything like that right. so no no political uh background in my, my family. parents wouldn't even tell each other who they voted for oh, that's okay. how private they were with their oh. political stance and you know I, I often joke but don't joke is you know i think you know if we're that way with our religion a little bit more like i'm 
Mm. It used to be intensely private with my religion. I'm a little bit more open about it now because I have so much fun assisting at church, you know, running yeah. the cameras and, and doing video director. But, yeah, my parents wouldn't even tell each other, uh, tell each other who they voted for, which I found was strange. And yeah. uh, But, you know, some people take yeah. that stuff very seriously. And I remember one time we came home, there was a, a, an election sign on my lawn uh, on our lawn and my dad went nuts maybe not mm. m maybe it wasn't the party he wanted or maybe it didn't matter but he was not pleased he's like you didn't put that thing on my lawn no way and we yeah. took it down right quick so yeah different different strokes obviously but uh yeah it's yeah. funny to hear hear you sit you know at 16 years old you're like boom this is the first guy i talked to and i always wonder i mean <laughs> We've talked, uh, and thanks to Andy Petrowski and Tony Quirk and, and the previous musicians that have come on, Jihad Yehia and MJ Blake and all my boys that have come on the show. We've uh, constantly talked about this personality type that is different. It's mm. it's almost like the, a different hardwiring of the brain. Obviously, we know men and women are different. You can't say <laughs> that publicly now or you lose your job, basically, if you say it. You know. Actually, I, quick side tangent. Um, I was doing a tour of a new laboratory at Brock University. And it was um, the neuromechanics lab. They do things, um, you know, various uh, studyings of different diseases and things like that. And one guy was doing his thesis right now on um, the differences in men and women's brains, like physiological mm. differences. And I actually asked him. I took him aside. I, I held up the whole tour. I took him aside, and I just said, are you getting any, like, political kind of pushback on this? Mm -hmm. and, and he actually said no. Um, I was really surprised to hear that. But he said, like, in, in the scientific community, um, it's just – accepted like you can see them like here are the physiological differences mm -hmm. um and i was like really and he goes we do have to be very careful though in our language talking about the difference between gender and sex um I, i'm struggling yeah. with the difference yeah. of that do you can you explain the difference between gender and sex it's it's i i'm not an expert on this okay. so like I, I i don't know enough to like speak right. authoritatively but he just said you know we have to be careful in, in our language, but the when the facts say, you know, there's differences between mm -hmm. the, the brains, because um, he's actually, this his specific research is showing that the firing of the, the um, I'm losing my words here, the electric, like the, the, the neurons um, are actually different rates for men and women, and that affects mm -hmm. muscle growth, and that affects muscle uh, usage and things like that, and so that's where he's studying right now. Um, and that made an impact on you somehow? Well, this was just, like, Two weeks ago. <laughs> oh, okay. It was very recent. So okay. it was just. What, what, what did you, you take it? away from that? Um, just that it was interesting that somebody was even doing a study into yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I mean, because the the Google memo was, yeah. you know, all the craze. It was mm -hmm. all up in the media forever. Well, except locally, we haven't seemed to talk about it at all. But I mean, I read that Google memo, and you know, it's too bad that whoever it was, Gawker or whoever first broke the story. Uh, put the title anti-diversity memo it wasn't an anti-diversity memo at all it was talking about the lack of diversity in stem uh science technology right. what is it uh, whatever it is mathematics um and i couldn't disagree with any of it i mean we're just hardwired differently and you know so but saying that right now i mean it's pretty obvious men are stronger Mm -hmm. uh, than women, uh, you know, after puberty, when the testosterone jolt kicks in. And then that fires a whole different chain of events down, you know. Uh, <laughs> we probably aren't as fearful as for our safety as women are, right? That makes sense. Why? Because, well, because the world is a more dangerous place for women, <laughs> both physically and then when you add sexually into it too, the the repercussions and the impacts of an uh, unwanted sexual encounter, let's say, are yeah. vastly uh, greater for a yeah. woman because obviously uh, pregnancy is an issue. Men can walk away with it; they don't have that issue. And in today's, even in a rich country like what we live in, in today, single uh, mother pregnancies. You, I mean, that's not a good way to start your life. So anyway, uh, I'm As going a down a road. Four a guy, bit. like I. I never had to really worry about that. Right. And it's, uh, so it, yeah, it makes sense that if, if, if the world is a more fearful place for women, then they're going to have a different way of looking at it. And I don't think mm -hmm. that's, that's 
incorrect or improper or uh to be honest i i think that like that's that having a different way of looking at it might not be that we're wired different that might be just practical right you have to have a different way of looking at it right Yeah, definitely um then i'm always interested too about the way the left and right have this different personality Mm -hmm. type and i don't know if it's a wiring in the brain so much as it is is maybe maybe a conditioning but no i think this stuff is biological i think you're Mm -hmm. born with it and conservatives tend to think a certain way about certain things. They like their borders. They like, and I mean borders as far as, you know, theoretical borders. Uh, uh, but then, no, functional borders too, like immigration. Uh, you know, conservatives are usually tight on it. They want mm-hmm. immigration tightened up. Whereas the liberals think outside the box. They don't have borders. They're free will and the free spirits. And, and then functionally, when it comes to immigration, they're like, nah, let them all in. <laughs> so, and and there's nothing wrong with that. In fact... Uh, the thing I've been struggling with a lot lately is this alt feminism hating on men mm-hmm. and forgetting that we got here together and that we need each other to move forward. I mean, women are the most important part of the human race. They give birth. Yeah. Like, we, like, hello. <laughs> I mean, obviously, you can't do it without us, but it's why most cultures, you know, back in the day, usually had a matriarch, usually had a, a mother right. goddess. Uh, right. You and know, the female was the most important part of it. And the you know what? We're not really going to figure out what this whole bringing women into politics in the workforce, because it's only been, you know, 30, 40, how many years since, you know, yeah, women have gotten really. their freedom. And I'm not opposed to giving them freedom because, well, uh, economic prosperity is directly correlated to these freedoms. Yeah. So, duh. Like, we want them yeah. to, to live and be happy. But, and it's funny when you say, <laughs> You know, back in the day when we rolled in tribes and even after that, you know, uh, I think I remember hearing uh, Camille Paglia. I don't know if you know her, but she, she's a, a brilliant, um, rapid speaking uh, feminist. And I still consider myself a feminist, but I'm really frustrated with this new age of feminism okay. that is really man blaming. Yeah. Uh, and um, Paglia was talking about, you know, she, she's Italian or both. Her parents came straight from Italy, and then she remembers as a child, and she's about 70 years old now, uh, that the women would take the laundry up the hill to the to the, the riverbed or the mm. spring or what have you to wash the clothes. And there was always, you know, 10 or 15 of them, or, and they rolled in their own tribe. There's no men. Mm. And that the elders actually held power. The elders were the ones that knew about childbirth and knew about uh, giving birth and, and about, uh, uh, you know, n- uh, nurturing your, ba- your your child. And all this generational um, information was down, handed down so that y- y- they had true elders and that they were the happiest people around because they they often finished other pe- uh, other women's sentences they 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 were very intimate with each other and singing and whistling all the way while they're doing basically like chores and men had their own chores but that the structure all broke down and now you you see that the the elders don't hold the power in the groups anymore <laughs> they're actually more outcast than they are accepted with the wisdom and and uh, all that kind of thing so i thought that that was, and what culture was this? Well, she's Italian, oh, but I think right. it's 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 pretty much the same in any culture where, you know, we are tribal beings. We yeah. are aggressive, violent creatures as humans, especially <laughs> men. And and I think that's okay to say, yeah, men have a, a violent, aggressive nature. They they need to protect their families. You know, there's a whole mm-hmm. bunch of things, and and I don't think there's anything wrong with saying, hey, we're different. We're better at different things, and and the same with the races. I mean, you know, you've got different races that are better at doing different things. I, like, mm-hmm. w- why is that racist to say that Asians have a proclivity to math or science or, or what have you? I or, don't, you know, yeah. black people are better at whatever or white people are better at whatever. What are yeah. we going to do is start going to institute in quotas. We're going to start going into, oh, no, there's too many uh, female nurses here. We need math. No, we don't need diversity at all costs. We're not equal. We're not equal between the races or between the sexes. And and but yeah, I just I haven't seen like you, you're talking about, you know, this culture as a uh, better at math or whatever the case may be. I haven't seen any scientific evidence on that one. Like I just haven't. I know there's you can say anecdotal evidence or 
whatever the case may be. But as far as, as I said, the, the men and women thing, I just learned about a paper. I also have a medical science degree. That's my other degree okay. at university. And like, I've looked into this. And so, yeah, like I can say physiologically here, the difference uh, between men and women, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, there are some differences, uh, twitch muscles, you know, in, in, uh, uh, black people and, and things like that. So again, there are some physio like physiological differences that you can point to, but I try not to speak in broad strokes unless there's like, there's, there's the evidence, right? Well, in this day and age, those broad strokes will get yeah. you in, in trouble with the politically correct p yeah. police. And that's a powerful left wing lobby right now. We'll talk about integrity commissioners and, and the tools of the left right now. I mean, uh, I'm ashamed of the left right now. I'm a left-leaning guy, but what they're pulling off with some of these, um, you know, invasions of freedom of speech and stuff like that, it, it's really, it's it's got me really concerned that we're going well, down the wrong way. So then you were just, you, you talked a little bit, and it's an interesting theory out there that, you know, the, the left and right is actually biological and that, you know, it's it's hardwired into you. Um, you just said you're a left-leaning guy, and then mm -hmm. I've watched your past interviews with, uh, you know, Petrowski and, and mm -hmm. Quirk, and, and you're saying that, you know, you tend to be, maybe switching a little bit um well, how do you kind of if it's hardwired then how do you explain you <laughs> well i i think that I, i'm open uh, and i took the 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 big five personality test knowing yourself okay. i think it's uh jordan peterson's site it's like 10 bucks is is that it's 100 questions jordan peterson that's the guy for the professor with the pronouns yeah i that? think he's one of the most brilliant men i just watched i i really Earth. haven't watched too much of him but just last week uh, a friend recommended me his podcast with uh, wow joe rogan oh him and joe rogan sat down for like two and a half hours yeah, a couple times yeah he was on with uh Weinst uh bert bert weinstein uh okay. who was at uh that uh place in the states there mm -hmm. where they they were saying uh they were they were having a day where all they, they didn't want the white teachers to show up and they were kind of saying, don't show up to work. And he's like, well, no, that's racist. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's yeah. racist, like not even in reverse, you know what I mean? So um, anyways, I, I ran through this test. It's 100 questions, and then mm. it shows you what your tendencies are as far as pers the big five uh, personality traits, which is openness to experience. Uh, openness is what I said about the borders. They're freewheeling. They're the left-leaning people. They're the social, uh, you know, a little bit socialism. Like I have a healthy respect for a little bit of socialism in our in our society. I think we need yeah. it. And well, without it, you know, the conservatives yeah. are like, no, every man for himself and less yeah. government, no welfare and stuff like that. And that's actually hmm. uh, that falls under conscientiousness. Well, so just just is, um, different. One of the books that I have right right now, uh, just beside my bed, actually is. Uh, but called Tommy Douglas Speaks. And it's a co compilation of a lot of Tommy Douglas um, speeches all through his career. And for those who don't know, Tommy Douglas being the NDP uh, premier in, was it? The oh, father of Medicare? Yeah, like that's, he invented Medicare. Like he invented our universal, universal access. Yeah. Um, and so <laughs> I don't think anyone in today's Canadian culture would say that's a bad thing. Very mm -hmm. few of us, right? We're, like, we're proud. We tell people around the world, we have universal health care, and we, we brag about it. Mm -hmm. And it's thanks to this NDP, um, you know, premier. And, uh, yeah, like, I think if you're left-leaning, right-leaning right now, you're still in favor of it. I I guess there has been some conversations, though, about privatization on some cases. Well, but it seems more it's effective, a very, right? Yeah, I, I don't know. Quicker like, access, sometimes better quality. Yeah, but like I would say Just that that's, that's become part of our culture, the universal health care. And mm -hmm. it's a very socialistic idea, and it's, it's a great one. <laughs> right. So, yeah, I'd encourage you to go by and take the personality uh, okay. test. I think it's knowingyourself.com. I'm sorry you can Google Jordan Peterson, but he's <laughs> bright. But, no, it's, it's, it's a shame, actually, because I've been called snowflake me like snowflake <laughs> and i'm leaning more right you know when i when i start agreeing with a ben shapiro who's pro-life um who's an orthodox jew yeah. um you know which i don't even understand that religion i didn't grow up with anyone that that was close to me that was that religion mm -hmm. but when i start agreeing with the likes of uh, ben shapiro and basically where it falls in line to the free speech and he was brave enough to stand up and say, you're born a boy or a girl. There's not 75 different sex that you can be born. So, you know, putting a U on a passport, because I think somewhere in Canada, I think in BC right now, they just put 
on a driver's license or something unknown for sex. Hmm. Did I, you hear? I, I don't. I yeah. don't get that, man. And so for him to say, uh, you know what, you can go through hormone hmm. replacement treatment. You can you can install different sexual parts into your body if you want and i'm fine I'm, do whatever you want like i'm not you know kind of sound a libertarian love whoever there. you want do whatever you want but you're that doesn't make you the opposite sex even if you change your parts and even if you take all these hormones that are from the opposite sex you're still a boy and i was like what no <laughs> and yeah. now we've got these 75 different genders uh someone wrote a thesis paper on that he identifies with hippopotamuses I don't, I don't get that. Like you're yeah. born a boy or a girl, and then it really frustrated me when uh, Bill C sixteen came out because of the freedom of speech imp implications. And I don't think we'll actually see the full ramifications of that for you know many years down the road, if any. But I'm I'm fearful that this mandatory use of made up pronouns is is just the thin edge of the wedge. Um, you know, it, these are not popular things to say right now. You know, and then so the liberals were so frustrated, and I, I talked to, I think it was Quirk a little bit about this. The liberals trot out a ten-year-old biological boy who identifies as a girl at ten, and they were talking about forcing him into a female puberty with estrogen, and I thought to myself. This is this is fucked up, man. This is this is child abuse, and I know I have the haters, and I've been called everything now because of it, of my take on, mm -hmm. you know, you're a boy or a girl, and if you want to change your sex, well, change your parts and stuff, and you don't feel like you're, pro I can't even imagine having a disassociation with my sexual identity. I can't because I'm a, mm -hmm. I'm a boy. I've always liked girls, and I can't imagine how painful that must be to look down and go, no, I don't identify with that. I, in fact, I identify with the opposite. And so, but they trotted out this kid named Charlie. And when I heard that Charlie was going to be forced into a fe female puberty, I mean, you can't even get a freaking tattoo until you're 18. Hmm. And I'm not, I don't understand it. So I'm not saying, and, and this is for the family to decide, and I wasn't there or anything. And maybe this kid absolutely you know, is is sure that he was born the wrong sex. But to have him and the family make that decision before he's even hit his natural mm -hmm. puberty as a boy, it struck me the wrong way, and it left me feeling like that's scary stuff, man. It's, and, again, like I always like to go back, you know, what do the facts and evidence say? What do the scientific community say? Maybe it's just because that was my, my first training. Was, that doesn't help science. me any here. No, but. Because people are it, always saying, well, you don't understand because yeah. the parents and the kid know best, you know? Well, yeah, you're right. I guess from uh, speaking to people, it may not help. But to, to actually look at the facts and evidence, you can see that your brain isn't fully developed until. 25. 20s. Yeah, in your 20s. And so. Um, that's one of the arguments against where should if we're legalizing marijuana, where do you put it because it can affect your brain development. Mm. Um, so that's just one of the topics that I've heard in the marijuana legalization uh, discussion is what age do you put the legalization because it can – there again has been studies that it can affect brain development if you take it while you're 14 or something like that. And so in this case that you're talking about, like the the child's brain has not fully developed, right? Like mm. he hasn't gone through – that and specifically yeah. i think it's the frontal cortex that is responsible for impact and consequence and that's why we do so many crazy things in our 20s before that frontal cortex is fully developed because we don't give a shit what happens yeah. that part of our brain isn't fully developed to the point that we can understand the I impact and i heard it being compared the other day imp improperly i think to being drunk drunks will actually reason out the impact and just say <laughs> fuck it i don't care yeah um whereas in your youth and i mean this is probably different with different sexes and, and different people um yeah that that is just not there so it makes sense to say well no you have to be the age of majority or 18 years old to get a tattoo of purple per, but this is permanent it's not even permanent it's ink on your skin yeah but then we're saying okay well if you don't feel if you feel like a girl today, then you can be a girl today. But if you feel like any of these other different genders over here, there's 75 of them. What? 
and, and then you got to call me my specific pronoun, and this is where I got turned on to Peterson or, or introduced to Peterson right. on the Rogan show everybody. because he said, yeah. you're not going to make me use, number one, you're not going to make my speech uh, like man, compel me mm-hmm. to say certain things. You can't fire, you can't yell fire in a crowded theater. That's against the law. That's something yeah. you can't say. You can't, and I don't know what, why we needed a, a, a law for this, but you can't deny the Holocaust. Okay, all right, that makes yeah. sense. The Holocaust happened. It was a yeah. horrible, horrible thing, perpetuated by sane human beings just like you and me. You know, the, Hitler wasn't just a crazy, you know, he was, he, was, he was sane. He was a human being just like us. But then to He's flip it around. He's an artist vegetarian, actually. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but to flip it around and say that you must say this. Yeah. Uh, I think is horribly dangerous. And uh, a speaker, I've been just been on a deep dive for this because I'm an information junkie. Um, you know, when Ms. came to the forefront. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm not even sure this is a women's lib issue more than it was a functional issue. Uh in the English language, there is no, um, what do you call the, the Ms. and Mr.? What are, what are those? I can't remember what those. Like the full term, master of the house? Is yeah, no, it's just the what they call it. It's not a pronoun, or is it? But oh, we, just like a title? or We uh, had master yeah. for young boys. We have miss mm-hmm. for young unmarried girls, and then misses for married girls, mm-hmm. and mister. But we didn't have the, we didn't have a word for the unmarried adult female. Right. So, and it kind of did come in through the back door, I think, with the women's lib who were, who were saying, no, we want, we don't want to be referred to as someone's husband. Mm-hmm. We want a Ms. But that was more a function of, of language that was failing us. It didn't, you know, in an English language, we don't have male and female for doctor. You're just doctor. Yeah. You know, Mrs. Doctor or Mr. Doctor. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And so that was, I think, a, a function of the failing of, you know, a, a descriptor that wasn't available. So that mm-hmm. so Ms. came in and it was accepted because it was accepted by everyone because it, it was. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But saying that I identify with a stuffed animal sexually or, or my gender or my biological you know, I was, uh, I'm a Teddy Rumpskin, and you will call me kin instead of him makes me horribly um, afraid that someone's going to come before the Human Rights Tribunal, similar to your integrity commissioner, mm-hmm. and and just decide that you're a homophobic, hateful bigot and that you owe someone a large chunk of cash. Mm-hmm. And if you don't pay that large chunk of cash, you go to jail. So if I misuse the, or if I use the improper pronoun on a rental application, or you rent my house and I call you her because you look like a girl to me, but you've already told me that you want to be referred to as Z, now you, now I'm discriminating again. You know that. So, I mean, this has been a long road, and so I've been tweaked by it a little bit and then jordan peterson came on rogan for this exact issue so Mm. he's a hate-filled xenophobic homophobic bigot racist Uh, this is what he's been called and now if i take any of those ways of being or those thoughts that you're born male or female there's really not much you can do about it afterwards no you're Mm. you're you know snowflake you're a racist intolerant bigot and i'm getting it all too so and he's getting it as far as you know intolerance all the way around and it's funny man i reached out i was you know struggling the other day and i reached out to a friend of mine who's a left-leaning gay man and said hey i think i think we need to get coffee yeah help me out here yeah Yeah, because i'm struggling with my right-leaning views on this specific issue because normally i'm tolerant and you know what my tolerant gay friend said to me fuck you basically yeah, oh, wow. you hang around. You think it's okay to hang around with the uh, the Andy Petrowskis? Andy's not my friend. I've never even had a beer with Andy. Yeah. I talk to Andy about politics sometimes. I had him on the show because I think he's interesting from the standpoint of his journey. He's certainly not perfect. And But if I am, and, and, and I said to this guy, listen, don't roll up to me at the opening of the pack and go, hey, how's your buddy doing now? For referring to P- Petrowski. I'm like, he's, 
he's not my buddy and that's not fair to say in public you know like he does something stupid like oh you're you know it's yeah. th and that's what he came back with me uh, to me with is um no as long as you hang around and you think that isms are okay and uh, racism and bigotry and homophobia, you know, and then we're done. Forget the coffee. Forget the podcast. And I went, like, I was heartbroken because this guy's been a friend for a long time. He's a friend yeah. of my mother's. And, you know, I'm, uh, it's, and I, it's, I shouldn't say friend because we don't yeah. hang around as somebody I respect and whatever. So here's a guy that preaches tolerance and love everywhere, you know, and I think that's what Trump's kind of given us is dude we're all racist intolerant hateful bigots mm -hmm. at some level and we're working on it and we're getting better but uh that's our survival mode man if we didn't fear the stranger or the the the, the man with a different colored skin or language or religion uh then we wouldn't have we wouldn't be here this is what's kept us alive this tribalism this this no like when we rolled up against a, color, a tribe of a different color, we tried to exterminate them completely. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't invite them over for dinner and have babies with them. Well, so I, think I think this just, is pretty natural. And if, yeah. if we don't start the conversation with going, okay, you know what? We're all kind of designed this way. It comes from a millennia of evolution. Um, but we're getting better and we're working yeah. on it. And we've got a long way to go. I think if we start this conversation there, then we got a, a, a better discussion. It's It's really a shame that, like you were trying to educate yourself and like i guess you lost that opportunity because like i think that's that shows an openness as you said but it shows like i'm trying to learn right mm -hmm. you know i went to a few recently um events put on by operg brock i don't know if you know what operg brock is mm -hmm. i actually don't know what the acronym stands for but they're into social justice and they're into these these type of issues uh racism uh, gender issues mm -hmm. uh diversity and the, the importance of of um that and and I actually learned quite a bit. So, like, I'm trying to educate myself just like you were. Like, hey, I'm struggling. Teach me, right? Right. So I kind of go and I'd be quiet and I wouldn't say anything because I'm not an expert on this. But I'm and always Opening trying... your mouth when you're not educated is to have... Exactly. We all know what happens well, there. Well, so that's why, as I said, I always try and look at what are the facts, what does, you know, mm -hmm. the science say, but, like, what are, what are, what are the, uh, the issues? Um, but you were just talking about tribalism. And I'll give you a little story uh, from my university years, which... I really think encapsulate this. Uh, when I was in university, I lived in residence, and uh, I went to Western, and it was a we had an amazing O week. I think we have one of the biggest O weeks in Canada. I'm pretty sure, and it was just incredible. And it was interesting because each day or each activity was structured in you know you had your floor. I was four west. That was my floor, four west Delaware, you know, hall. And so you were with your floor, and that was your group. That was your tribe. And you, you sometimes competed against the other floors, and that was your tribe. But then the next day, it was your residence. It was this residence versus this one. It was Delaware Hall versus Alumni Hall. And then everyone in Delaware was my friend, right? I never met this guy, but he was my best friend right there because we were going up against Alumni Hall. Right. And then the next day, it went faculty-based. So it was everyone in science versus everyone in, in social science, right? And then it expanded, and you're like, okay, these are all new people. And, and then finally, the, the culmination was homecoming, where it was Western was playing football against whoever, mm -hmm. right? And it was this entire university was your tribe. And so it was really cool to see how, depending on what context you're in, you know, how it can expand, because it definitely can expand, or how tiny it can be, your floor, your roommate, you know, very small. And it was really a cool experience, and I think they developed it. I was so impressed how they've developed their programming because each day you build on it, each day you build more friends, more people, mm -hmm. and I don't know, by the end of it, you just felt like you were a part of a team. You were part of the university. Um, so that was a great experience for me. I'm yeah, very... The identity politics has yeah. fractionated us into the, I mean, you can fraction it right, right down to the, the individual. Like, okay, <laughs> yes. okay, so black people are oppressed. Okay, so black women are more oppressed. Okay, okay but black women with... Uh, that are single with children they're more oppressed black women single children that are have autism like i mean we yeah. and this is what we forget and, and you know what was just tweaked in me it's like you know when you leave your country and you see one of your hometown people <laughs> yes across the world yeah. somewhere and you're like hey <laughs> now you you've seen these person a hundred times in your own community never spoken to them yeah 
not even so much as a hello or a greeting or what you might know their name you might know where they work you might know who their kids are but you've never spoken to them because it's this little mm -hmm. you know it's we're not we're getting more social but you know i mean we're not <laughs> that social i mean we're social creatures but we could do yeah. much better on it so so yeah what i'm just thinking of is like when you see that person across the world in italy you're like hey I'm a countryman yeah. all of a sudden and this is the fractionation of the identities is pulling us away as we fight over left and right and we, and we as we fight as men and women we forget mm -hmm. we're human period we share more as human beings it doesn't matter the race the color or the religion mm -hmm. or the sex then we differ yeah and that's I think what, what's been lost, and I think this Trump experiment has really, uh, like the gap is hugely wide right now. Mm -hmm. Like even before Trump came in, the left and the right, the gap wasn't as big as it is now. Now the ideological and the, and the political gap is wider than it's ever been. And the mm -hmm. extremism on both sides is far more evident than it's ever been. This Antifa yeah. or Antifa or what, I don't even know how, what to call it, but it makes me sick to see these mm -hmm people running around in masks this is not activism yeah this is not standing up for free speech because free speech means even if you're a fucking complete tool and you think that nazism is the religion of the day or the way that we should proceed mm -hmm. you're you're obviously a tool but you should have the right to be a tool in public you shouldn't have to go to jail or have to pay someone costs because you hurt their fucking feelings like so I think we've just become the political correctness has gone so radical and it and you know I always compare it to the, to the pendulum man when it swings back sometimes it cuts hard <laughs> yeah and it's gonna swing back and maybe it's swinging this way right now because we swung so hard left under Obama or well we didn't really swing left but yeah I was gonna uh, say like a uh, democratic uh, American is still far righter <laughs> than our conservatives right mm -hmm. so just if you look at the spectrum. So I think it's an interesting conversation that, that needs to be had, and, and we're kind of going down the road of identity politics, and that's not why I brought you in. I <laughs> wanted to talk a little bit of politics. It was a good, good chat. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my guest is Mike Britton. I'm Jim Fannin. You can find us on SoundCloud and all the podcast uh, platforms in addition to Twitter and Facebook. Um, tell us uh, – NPCA comes before council. So it's, it's Tuesday night. morning yeah. right now, as you Facebook <laughs> livers know. I heard there was the same 12 people demonstrating the NPCA out there again. Um, uh, it, can you speak to that? Because I've never seen the protest, but is it the same 12 people so and no more? I actually, um, I had to go to, count, had to. No, I was at City Hall about 5 p.m. because we had the Trillium Awards last night before council. Trillium Awards are for gardens, you know, in the city. In like, chamber. Um, in it, chambers. it was actually just outside the chambers oh, okay. in, in the other room. But um, so anyway, I missed the protest completely. Um, I didn't like walk through it. I was up up there. So I don't know the size of it. Uh, I did see a picture. I think it was Melinda Cheevers from Niagara this week uh, tweeted one out. And um, it looked like it was bigger than the usual okay. 12. But I wasn't I didn't see it. I'll be honest. Now, the chamber was filled. And the interesting thing about this was there was I'm not going to say half the chamber, but there was a third of the chamber. And they were all wearing I love the NPCA um, stickers. And they were um, there was some unionized staff. There was some non-unionized staff. Uh, they brought out, you know, some of their mm. family or whatever. And um, and then the other, you know, kind of was this side. And then this side was uh, some of the protesters came up. A lot of them didn't. Um, but, yeah. So it was an interesting dynamic that last night, that's for sure. What's your take on the NPCA? Do we need to get involved here? Is this just uh, Andy Petrowski would say this is the politics of distraction? Let's, let's get yeah. to homelessness. Let's get to taxes. Let's get yeah. to water rates. Let's, you know, the NPCA. So, and, I mean, I was kind of tweaked by the NPCA because of the, the issue on thundering waters. Mm -hmm. I feel like they got caught with their pants down a couple of times. And Tony Quirk was really good about uh, addressing all those issues. And I kind of learned a little bit mm -hmm. from him from the standpoint that he doesn't I think it's too. a bad deal yeah. that – uh, Barrick got hired from the board to staff. Happens all the time. That's not cronyism. Yeah. Okay. Well, you see it, to be honest, where you see it the most is in not-for-profits all the time. Um, and, like, ones that nobody would question their motives. You know, places like community care or something like that. Where well, Why would you not question their motives? I don't there know. You still just, cronyism. I'm just if saying, you... like, that's – that's it, it's very common. I've seen it. Like, right. So, But it just when, yeah. when I read the Code of Conflict, and the Code of Conflict says you may not benefit in any way, shape, or form from being on this board – 
That yeah. job as a CEO or a director or what have you is a huge benefit. But uh, yeah. and Tony made the point that no, as long as you don't vote for yourself, it's no conflict. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I don't get it. <laughs> and then he he really uh, articulately spoke to the level of expert. Um, expertise in some of these board members they're familiar already with the people around the table but they have a specific yeah. expertise into the field that they are applying for so I, I don't get it but what's your board. what's your take but so the... um to yeah to get back to the mpca uh i disagree with you on one thing that you've said in the past and i think we've talked about it before and that's well this is a distraction this is a waste of time um I can, you know, chew gum and walk. I can do two things at once. Like, I don't mind spending time on some issues. That's why we're elected. Um, so I, I have, I've openly said, like, if you have an issue, bring it to me, you know? Like, I, I want to learn. specifically said that about the NPCA. No, no, not about the NPCA, but I'm just saying in general. Direct, like, and dual direct. So code of conduct. I think I mean, if it's, if it's an issue for the people, I'll discuss it. That's Fair just, enough, yep. So that's, that's where I sit on this. So this is clearly an issue for... Uh, as you said, the same 12 people, but it's just an issue for some people. Mm -hmm. um, we got, uh, I'm just trying to remember, uh, like maybe seven or eight emails uh, Sunday and, and Monday, the last couple of days um, about this. So clearly people are concerned. The accusations that, the, that are made are very serious. You know, they're very serious accusations. But when you say, should it be discussed at council? Should it be this? Should it be that? The answer is I have no idea. We've never put an official document in front of us talking about these accusations, talking about these allegations. We've had a number of documents granted from the source, from the NPCA, showing here's our year-end summary. Here's our executive summary. Here's our, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. And so it's, as a, as a counselor, we've got the CAO of the NPCA saying, you know, we didn't fire 25 percent of our our um staff and he would know you would think like as the cao of the mvca you think he'd know um and then you've got an, an mpp um cindy forrester from niagara center saying yeah they fired 25 percent of their staff and you have you know citizens saying something else and i don't know the answer i i, I honestly do not know um and it's because we don't have any oversight or we don't fund them or we don't play any role in their usage right so this is where i said i'm happy to spend time on you know whatever you want to come and talk to me about however city council doesn't have any authority in this sense well nobody's claiming um, authority over it even so the that is an issue it's not us yeah. the problem's going it's not <laughs> us and wins like yeah, yeah. let's we'll yeah exactly away, so you know? that's that's the that is the issue now one of the outcomes that i think it, it's a good thing is is last night the the motion that was put on the floor um was referred for more for more information right to look into that information and so now we're going to have city staff um who don't fund the npca don't appoint board members don't they they have no like bias here to my knowledge i may, i have no idea but they're going to look into some of these these issues the problem they're going to uh, run up against is where do they get their information right um but it'll be interesting to see what that report says when it comes back, because though I'm happy to discuss any issue, because I think we've done some good work, and I'll give you some concrete examples about stuff that's not within our mandate whatsoever. I personally have moved a motion, a couple motions that are not within our mandate, and I'll tell you why I did them. One of them was about um, when the autism funding was cut um, at the provincial level. I don't know if you followed that story, the Autism Doesn't End at Five campaign. Mm -hmm. Um that that was a woman in an, in my ward actually in my community contacted me and said my son's autistic, um, he's losing his funding. Uh, he just you know turned six, and I was like you know wow that's that's heartbreaking and and what how we worded the motion was we were requesting the province because we can't tell them what to do, um, you know to put the funding back in and in a, in this model I did I did my research and. We also said circulate this to the other municipalities and get like a public pressure because that does work and look what happened, right? I'm not saying my motion changed anything, but I think the cumulative effect of motions from all across the province, from both opposition parties in the legislature, um, that pressure, the liberals changed their mind or the government, I should say the government of the, of the day changed their mind um, because of that public pressure. Another example is I moved a motion about uh, banning asbestos within Canada. Um, I went to a, this is a federal issue, so I went to one of these, uh, the, the day of mourning, which is for workers who have uh, died on the job or got injured on the job, and they had a speaker there, um, and she spoke about how her father 
and uh, had died of mesothelioma from asbestos exposure while working in, I believe it was a GM plant. And the, her uncle was just diagnosed, you know, same thing. And I had no idea, to be honest, until I heard the speaker that we were still importing asbestos, like as a as a exporting exporting. Yeah, yeah. sorry, um, exporting asbestos. Yeah, and the idea is like, should yeah. the government of the day be charged f with murder for <laughs> yeah. exporting something but, that's known to kill yeah. people? So <laughs> to get back is I we moved a motion in support of this u uh, this union who was fighting the federal government at the time. And I wasn't the only one. Like, uh, I moved it, a bunch of other municipalities. And again, public pressure. Um, so those are examples where we have no business, right? Like, I'm not an expert in asbestos. I'm, I'm not, um, you know, an expert in autism. But uh, And our, our council, we don't have staff. We don't have doctors for autism or we don't have, you know, people dealing. We might actually have Fair some enough. engineers with asbestos. But I thought it was an important issue. I thought that public pressure could make a difference. And it did. Those are two concrete examples where it did. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'm happy to deal with issues that aren't necessarily within our context, but we have to be realistic in, in our expectations, right? Um, and we have to be realistic in, in how we word the motion. The motion last night was, whereas city council has lost faith within the NPCA, I have no evidence. I know that there's a lot of public pressure, you know, against them. Mm -hmm. I, I, I understand that, and there are some serious concerns, but... I can't say that I've lost faith in them. I have no concrete evidence to show that, right? Mm -hmm. So we'll see We'll see what that report says. Yeah. So, and, you know, it's just, it's my take that there's so many very serious issues that we're facing right now in our community. Mm -hmm. You know, jobs is obviously the buzzword. And I'm not sure that governments do anything to create jobs obviously they create a climate where businesses can flourish but 100%. government just doesn't make jobs at any level and that's why you know how many elections have i run in coming up on 10 i would say with internal and and public and external elections uh, and my you know jobs are the buzzword and getting people elected even and i constantly am like you know what that's so much bullshit we don't create jobs as government and if we yeah. do we're creating the wrong type of jobs you don't yeah. even want the type of jobs that we create. You know, well, mm -hmm. you'll never have a chance to get them. You might want them, and you might think it's good for the economy, but you'll mm -hmm. you'll never get them. Yeah. So, uh, and, you know, the politics of distraction, for me, take away from these important issues like taxes, like hydro costs. And again, it's not in, in your purview or your, your uh, mandate. Um and I'm not saying that the NPCA falls into that category because I think it's important. It seems to be kind of a rogue institution that, that maybe has lost its way. Maybe it's just the perception. Maybe it's a whole just a bad PR uh, campaign. The, the point I was trying to make is I don't know. Right. Right? Like I, I honestly don't know. And I can't say that I know much about <laughs> it either. But, it, you know, the optics are all bad. No, we didn't lobby. Well, yeah, we actually found that you had a lobbyist. Oh, yeah, well, we, we did lobby. Well, we no – no, that w that was never on the table to pave over the PSW. The, well, actually, yeah, you were considering doing it. You're, you know, you kind of feel like you're in the developer's pocket a little bit, or they are. Um, you know, no, we, uh, yeah, yeah, I get your point. No, we did. As, <laughs> no, and then yeah. it, it finds later that that they had. So I think it's 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 a massive PR problem, obviously. But then when we go down the road of governance, I campaigned on no one Niagara. Mm -hmm. I don't want to see centralization of power any more than it is already. In my opinion, the region, if anything, should be dissolved as an elected body. Yeah, we can have a service provider or multiple service providers to buy in bulk and get the discount that we need to provide services for Niagara citizens that are consuming uh, water and you know we have to get rid of our waste and we have police and public health and e even if you put you know economic development under one roof from yeah. all the municipalities which some municipalities are too small to even have an economic development yeah, they don't i didn't even know that yeah so there's not 12 economic development no departments there's more like five or seven because they'll <laughs> um and then the integrity commissioner and the code of conduct. And then we talk dual duty and dual duty always for me. And I, you know, 
I have nothing personal against Miro Senzik. Mm. Uh, I think he does with me a little bit for whatever reason. I don't know. Uh, I mean, I think it's interesting that people will not disclose that they have hate in their heart, but they, forever mm. they're like, you know, when some, oh, you, you know, when you look at someone, oh, you're yeah. just like, no, you, you're not my cup of tea. You, I don't like you. You don't mm. know them, and then very often later you'll go, okay, so I was wrong on that. Or maybe you're validated on it. But we all have this thing in us where mm. you don't like someone for no good apparent reason. Anyway, I met, I met with Walter uh, a decade ago and said, hey, plug me in if you see a, an opportunity for me to help because I care and I want to help. And I, I had known him. And so, you know, I did, <laughs> taking a shot at what he did at the Grape and Wine Festival – you know, changing the name to the Niagara Wine Festival and then moving to the G to the St. Catharines Chamber of Commerce and then changing that to the Greater Niagara Chamber of Commerce without actually being great or anything or taking any other if you took well into Niagara Falls and I'm yeah. beating a dead horse here, but and then with the idea that one big group is better than twelve small groups, this dual duty came up or mm -hmm. dual Yeah whatever. double direct or whatever you call it. Um I thought and I still think that that was the thin edge of the One Niagara movement. Mm -hmm. First, we get a little tweak here. And I, I love how he tried to sneak it through in the first weeks of the mandate. Oh, come on, province. Just let us do a little <laughs> test pilot here. Yeah. I'm like, well, that's genius. Yeah. I don't get it because I don't, you know. And then after I delved into the double director, the dual duty, I, I, I didn't like it at all. Yeah. But for me, it's a, it's, a, it's a narrative that's buried back there that's moving this whole One Niagara thing forward, and I felt like that was it. And, and, yeah. and the One Niagara, I, I, I swear, will never pass a triple majority in the region the way the political structure is set up. Mm -hmm. It would have no, to be the province, and I don't think any that's, provincial There's no will there. right there, no political will yeah. right there. And so I just am frustrated with the amount of time that we spend talking about things that just – don't matter like mm. what the hell is double direct going to change how is that going to make my life better well it's not it's actually mm. going to reduce the number of counselors that's why i stood against it and it, it kind of favors the centralization of power yeah kill the region we don't need it as a governing body but let's not make another level of government that's distant from the people that have the problem like let's keep mm. the solutions home-based like mm. closest to the people that are suffering the problem because mm -hmm. as you get further away, you get the municipalities that are closest. Then you get the region, they're further away. And then you get the problems even further away. And then you get the feds even further away. The feds can't possibly know what's right for Wayne Fleet, for Niagara and Lake. Right. So I, I guess that's a little bit of my frustration is like how much time have we spent on, mm -hmm. and I want to get into the integrity commissioner and the code of conduct because I think it's, it's wholly you important. you got to let me answer a dual rap because I'm yeah, on no, the other yeah, side Yeah, no, of that. absolutely. And this is, <laughs> uh, you're fr I'm doing too much talking. You're my guest. You should be doing yeah. the talking. I could do a monologue anytime. But uh, as far as dual rap is concerned, you, you mentioned a little bit like, you know, what's uh, Walter's agenda, you know, because it was grape and wine and chamber of commerce. And before he ran for mayor, I didn't know Walter. I, I don't think I've, I don't think I ever met Walter before he ran for mayor. Um, I guess his, is his grand, I think one of his family members used to live across the street from my family, but I didn't know Walter at all. So, um, and I ran on dual rep. It was on my brochure. You can go look at it, you know, flip it up. It was under, um, I actually had it under a heading about property taxes, holding the line on property taxes, but it was dual representation. It was right on there. And how this happened was when I was looking at running and I was looking at building a platform and looking at some issues, I went and talked with one of them, of course, uh, was actually Keith Yo from the Chamber of Commerce, so that makes mm -hmm. sense. But um, I also asked my mom, who do you know? And uh, one of the people that she knew from her time was uh, uh, Bruce Timms. And I talked with him, and obviously this was one that was near and dear to him. And um, I, I looked at all this stuff, and I read the, the documents um, that – the governance committee under, uh, I think, Cisco and, and was a Birch chaired that committee or looked into that mm -hmm. committee um, in the last term of council. And I read those documents and, and I like the idea. Um, I'm, I know that you were saying you're against or you don't want centralization. Um, I find that there are efficiencies in centralization. I find that we can actually save money for centralization. Never happens so. Um, in any in any municipality that's ever amalgamated, they only hired more well, staff and got bigger on the I payroll. I think that the services, and this is a comment that Tony actually made on your show the other day, and I think it's that the 
amalgamation of some services. We just talked about economic development, right? Sure. Um, we can point to at the city, we just amalgamated, um, well, we're in the process of amalgamating our parks and rec department and our TES are now all being moved into the Lake Street Yard over, um, yeah, on the Lake Street Yard. And so that for cost savings, right? Like we're saving costs because we're all moving into this one building. We're expanding that one. But mm -hmm. um, th so I, I believe, this is my belief, that um, you can find efficiencies through centralization. Um, also, when you look at the stats, and, and this is where Tony and I will actually differ because he said he wants more politicians. Um, I think we have too many. I think when we compare ourselves, we have about 130 throughout the region, I think, just municipally. Mm -hmm. And we have about 430,000 people in Niagara. You look at Hamilton, which I know is a one-tier system, a different city, but we, they have 550,000. They have 100,000 more than us, and they have 16 people. Mm -hmm. 16. Now, is that too low? Maybe. But when you've got 16 on one hand, you've got 130. There's got to be a happy medium. There's got to mm -hmm. be a happy. Now, to, to Hamilton's point, they don't have two tiers. The getting rid of the region, to your point. Um, There's not many municipalities that have the two tiers. There's only yeah. a few in Ontario that are left, I think. And so I think we could reduce the number of politicians and not hurt democracy in any way. Yeah, let's you start know? with killing the region. There's 31 yeah. of them right there, including the chair. Big <laughs> yeah. paychecks. Yeah. Not so much uh, getting done. So, um, well, I, I appreciate your thoughts on that, but I, I will say that, yeah, I disagree with the, uh, the idea sure. that even if you find efficiencies, they'll be absorbed with new staff mm -hmm. because there's always, every time we amalgamate, there's never been a case of it anywhere. And actually, there's a lot of de-amalgamation going on. You know, they, they were forced into it or they decided yeah. it was going to be a better deal. And then we're like, no, this ain't working, man. Let's mm -hmm. go back to the... So I'd like to see that. But uh, just switching gears to the integrity commissioner, because, and I think this is a, a wholly important conversation because we haven't, well, at the region, we haven't dealt with the code of conduct yet. Uh, I see something very lacking in the idea that a code of conduct doesn't respect uh, freedom of speech or the charter at any level especially for a politician. I think a politician needs to be able to say whatever the hell he wants where, where it relates to politics. If you don't like it, vote him out. If he commits a crime, then okay. Yeah. But other than that, I yeah. mean, just because you say something that's offensive or, you know, somebody used the other day of a regional council, a female regional counselor was uh, on the beach topless in town here. That'd be a that that could be a code violation i'm like really but if she was on cuba on a nude beach like because it's legal to be topless in ontario yeah but it, it, on a nude beach you know in an on in an international nude beach now it's not offensive to me i'm like come on i don't get this and so yeah. now, now it gets into the idea okay well first of all we don't have a standardized code across ontario or canada i think that is important yeah i would agree the with that. way um these integrity commissioners are appointed with no real expertise and uh, mm -hmm. being um, appointed or hired by the current um, sitting government c is, you know, obviously could be abused. Mm -hmm. um, On that, just a quick, like, we'll go through each point, but um, I don't know how to solve this one, but I don't like that it's one, like, person. You know, mm -hmm. um, you talk about jury of your peers. You talk about the, the relationship to the um to the charter and that you know one of the things you have is the right to be judged by your peers and stuff like that or um one one person like is going to mm -hmm. decide whether this was right or wrong everyone has their own biases as we talk everyone's an individual everyone um so like down to bias <laughs> but i'm just saying unconscious one mandatory person. unconscious <laughs> bias training <laughs> but uh yeah so th that's i don't know what the salt the issue is because it's already a very expensive process so i don't want to hire mm. 12 of them right that would be ludicrous but it's just one of the issues i've had i don't know what the solution is yeah um well i think the solution is uh, a code that's consistent right across yeah. all levels of government uh, that allows people to say what they want with the idea that unless you're breaking a law mm -hmm. well and we even saw you know at the municipal the municipal elections act doesn't really give a recall mechanism you can't vote someone off council because they're mm -hmm. a drug user re you know rob ford yeah we saw that and i think that 
maybe people now are, are thinking, you know what, maybe a recall mechanism would be good. I think you, you know, were talking about certain, that. Uh, yeah. Under certain circumstances, uh, referenda, I think, would be good. And, you know, Petrosky, to his credit, he's done some good things and some not so good things. Uh, brought a motion forward at the region one time to initiate a referenda. He had the questions all laid out, and he mm -hmm. got voted right off the floor. What the hell's wrong with having a non-binding plebiscite where people can go and vote, mm -hmm. and get and, and politicians can take the pulse of the community and go, "Oh, really? <laughs> Everyone wants a one Niagara? Well, maybe we should be talking about that." The problem yeah. is, no one wants a freaking one yeah. Niagara except the big business guys. And with the idea that they're going to save money or blah, 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 blah. Or there's too many politicians. I personally think the more politicians, the better access I have to them. Mm -hmm. So if I don't call, you know, if I, you know, if Jenny Stevens is busy, you know, what's his name? We'll pick up the phone maybe. Uh, Har yeah. is it Haywood. Harvard? Haywood, yeah. Um, who, who I don't know either, but kind of is a hero for me from the standpoint that he, he switched his vote on that double direct thing and mm -hmm. he killed it. And I was on 12 agendas to go speak at it all across the region to make sure it didn't happen. And, and so I'm glad he did that because I, I don't know him. But So the code is a problem. The code's going to come back before regional council. But when Petrowski said, well, I'm going to challenge the constitutionality of the code, I'm like, yeah, let's do this. Because mm -hmm. you've got all these codes all over the place that say different things. And there's an idea that, no, you're 24-7 counselor. It doesn't matter where you go topless or whose basement you're watching football in when you make an inappropriate remark mm -hmm. or you do something inappropriate, that that can be all dragged up before the integrity commissioner and waste all this money with yeah. the idea that there's really no teeth in a punishment. I mean, they screwed up the punishment so bad on Petrowski. It was unreal. Like, he seemed to comply with the sensitivity and the apology and all this kind of stuff. But they really have no mandate to make him do anything, yeah. including – coming to a seat maybe they can kick them off uh, committees but i kind of hold the line that no if you don't like it vote me out and unless mm -hmm. i've done something well even then even if you've done something criminal i don't know that there's a mechanism to get someone off council mm -hmm. but this whole idea that we we, ha we have to clean up the code of conduct and we need a process that respects the charter as far as the integrity commissioner goes and this integrity commissioner we talked briefly just before we went on air here about mm -hmm you being the subject of integrity complaints Couple, yeah. and so you know tell me a little bit about that experience and the frustration of one not facing you not being able to face your accuser you yeah. actually don't even have a copy of the complaint yeah. you don't get to speak to the guy that renders the decision until after his decision is rendered so jurisprudence goes right out the freaking window and this is again mm -hmm. like freedom of speech one of the mo one of our core the one of our f fundamentally most important core principles and we're like, no, nah, that's fine. <laughs> so, and now being yeah. used as a political tool, right? So someone gets pissed off with Mike Britton or, oh, okay, I'll file a complaint. I mean, we even have bodies that aren't eligible to file complaints under the system, i.e. town of Pelham. They're not a person. Well, that's actually... That's out of order right off the bat. I had never considered that because one of the complaints um, that was filed against me was uh, from Jeff Birch, who's... Uh, the director of the or the executive director of the folk arts uh, multicultural center um and i remember about halfway through when it it kind of when when it kind of most people were on the side of this is a waste of money this is ridiculous um the narrative was tried to be switched well it, no it wasn't jeff birch it was the the folk arts um Even worse yeah so i I, I actually don't know how that ever got cleared up, he, but that was what they kind of said was it was actually the Folk Arts Board that filed this complaint. Um, just to mm. give some background, I should have, you know, led with this is um, the Folk Arts is, uh, gets a grant from the city for their festival each year under the, uh, the, the Grants and Festivals program. And um, they come to council and they tell us what they're going to use the money for, right? It's, it's kind of the, hey, tell us what you're doing with, with the taxpayers' dollars, right? And... I had heard some issues. I went to, I love the Folk Arts Festival. It's one of, I go to, I think I went to every open house the last two years. And there's about 30, some of them, there maybe 20. Um, and they're different cultural sites, the Polish community, the Armenian community, the Ukrainian community all have their, their open houses and they're, and they're just wonderful. But there were some issues, like I don't need to get into the weeds, but I heard from some of the cultural communities um, 
that there were some issues with the festival. They, they were worried about some concerns. And as a representative, I asked these questions, right? Just like I did last night with the NPCA. I, I don't know, he said he didn't watch, but I went, here's an email that I received with these concerns. And I asked them, right? They're not going to file a, at least I hope not, they're going to file an integrity commissioner claim because they were rough, they were harsh questions. Like I asked them, you know, but this was the NPCA, like somebody saying you're not filling your mandate because of this, this, and this. Like I, I was pretty Bolton with them, and, and that's kind of what I was doing. I said, the cultural community has brought these concerns. Mm-hmm. Can you, you know, answer? And, and the allegation was that um, my, uh, I bullied them by asking these questions. And so that was the integrity commissioner complaint was bullying. Um, now the, there was a report, it went through the, uh, the, the commissioner, integrity commissioner just said it was completely (laughs) politically driven. Uh, I was really surprised because this, this is a lawyer. uh, His name was, uh, I think it was John Maskerin who did it. Yeah, it was John Maskerin. Um, Mm -hmm. and he's a, he's a lawyer. And so usually lawyers are careful with their language, but he used qualifiers like it was totally you know, totally um, unwarranted and completely, you know, Absolute. like it was like it was really like strong language. The The report's available online. We received it at council. It's it's open to the public. Um, now, he wrote that report without ever contacting me. Um, but the, the reason um, given was that it never actually got to the investigative stage. It was that um, it was that he was able to just watch the video and see that there wasn't enough yes. evidence to to even go forward with uh, it cool man so i um, mean in this case it worked out all right but i mean it could have yeah, very easily turned gone the other the, way and then yeah. what you're you're sitting there going <laughs> what no one talked to me yeah and we got this decision that says i'm guilty of this this and this and this and i don't even get to and if i stand up in council once the like you know like andy right if i stand up in council once it's out there well i'm gonna fight the expert right like mm. you know that's the 400 that looks an hour pretty, guy that looks pretty bad right so um, yeah, it was a bit of a weird process to go through. The other uh, integrity commissioner complaint, um, the the applic or the complainant withdrew. I think once they found that they didn't have enough evidence, mm-hmm. um, but they withdrew it, so that never went all the way through the steps. But um, yeah, so I'm I'm intimate with the process and uh, the lack thereof, to be honest. Um, I think that as we discussed, there is a need for for oversight. I think that mm-hmm. there there is a need. I'm I'm a believer of that, but the standardization of a code would definitely be <laughs> an important step to making it more effective. You know, mm-hmm. what's your take on uh, capacity? I mean, it, this has been talked about a lot. Official capacity, yeah. And the code, I think, well, the code of conduct came before. Maskerin brought the code of conduct to the region. Yeah. And then uh, Volpatti and Quirk gutted it as far as they made 54 changes or amendments to it. <laughs> that might, it sounds like it might actually hold, but it's going to come back. It might be approved by the committee, though, and then come back to be ratified by council, and, and, mm-hmm. and maybe there'll be some debate over that. But I'm not sure what happens there. But this idea, and then Sandy and Anziata, obviously, uh, you know, I don't know Sandy that well. <laughs> I, I, I like Sandy kind of a lot. Uh, I went to high school with him, so I knew him oh, from okay. Notre Dame a little bit. Um, he's a man's man, and I'm kind of that guy, that yeah. guy too. I don't agree with everything he does. He's obviously conservative, and you know I'm kind of a lefty. Uh, but big gonads, man, taking the chair at NPCA, and I think uh, yeah. Tim's was smart to get the fuck out of the way because, well, he probably wants to be reelected again, <laughs> and yeah. I'm thinking that. Probably being the chair of the MPCA for Bruce wasn't the most appropriate place for him to be if he wanted to be reelected. So I think he got out of the way smartly because yeah. of that. It was a hornet's nest for for Sandy to get into for sure. Like yeah, I'm gonna be honest, just, takes big, big just last ads. night, yeah. um, like with the debate that we had last night, like I almost wanted to <laughs> stay quiet, right, stay out of it, don't say anything because it's such a hornet's nest. But I I realized like I had these questions from residents and I needed to stand up and ask them right like this is because I didn't know the answers, so and I don't I, I'm certainly not prepared and yeah. it's it's I, I love having this conversation so thanks Mike Britton's my guest, uh, counselor for uh, City of St Catharines. We actually think in conversations. I mean, you can sit there and think all day yeah. in your head. Nothing ever <laughs> changes. It's not until we try to artic- articulate our argument, and this is what I do yeah. as a as an openness, low and conscientiousness, I'm always, I'm about ideas and I want to discuss the issues of the day mm-hmm. mostly. 
but it's not until I put the words off my lips mm -hmm. that someone will go, um, no, that's wrong. And we were talking about this Charlie thing with some Green Party friends, old Green Party friends, because I'm not really connected to the party that, that much. I was in Toronto this weekend. Had dinner with a couple of uh, girlfriends of mine that were connected to the party that go way back to 06. And so I was articulating this frustration about Charlie, the 10-year-old. Mm -hmm. You know, and I probably got my information wrong, but I phrased it as like at 10 years old, you shouldn't be able to say, okay, take this sexual organ off me and put a new one, a different one on. Like mm -hmm. it, it sounds like. But it's not until I present my case orally and yeah. verbally and out to the universe that my friends and enemies, and mm -hmm. by the way, I learn more from my political and, and, yeah. and, and functional enemies than I do anyone else. Because the the yes people are like, oh, yeah, yeah. You, you, when you hang around with people, all think the same. You don't learn a damn thing. So it's not till the words come off our lips that some will go, oh, dude, that's so wrong, and this is why. And then you soften your position on it. It's like yeah. that idea is dead now rather than me dying. When, yeah. you know, I, I put the words out there. The idea either lives on and you're validated that you feel right, mm. incorrectly or, or not. Uh, or and then if 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 you're off base, you, you get shut down right away. So this is again goes back to, you know, and we start uh, talking about Sandy in the in the uh, official capacity, this um, idea that he's driving to CFRB every week in Toronto, mm -hmm. and claiming I don't know 150 bucks in mileage or something like that, right? And everyone's drinking the Kool Aid on this thing, and I'm not a Sandy Annunziata honk. I'm, mm -hmm. you know, he's not my best friend. Never had a beer with the guy. It's just like you. I mean, I talk to people in politics. Mm -hmm. I can disagree respectfully and then go for a beer. But, I mean, Sandy's not a friend of mine. So I reached out to him and said, like, what's this deal all about? Well, it's $4,000. Well, how many times are you going up there every week? Well, so what's that, like 40, 45 weeks if you take out the holidays? Yeah, something like that. And I go, and they announce you as counselor. Oh, yeah, every break. Every going out, every mm -hmm. extra, they did, man, I'm sitting with Sandy and Anziata, elected counselor in Agri Region. I, I don't get the problem. Well, he's not in official capacity. And, and again, I'm beating around the bush and going long-winded here. It's my style. <laughs> um, is that a legitimate expense? Well, damn straight it is to me. I'm the only guy that I know, well, that has said publicly, it's a good deal, man, four grand. Mm -hmm. Four grand. Have you seen 1010's rates? Like, yeah, they're probably a hundred bucks a thirty second commercial or seventy at least. I mean, here in town, I think that I paid fifty. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, maybe you can get a good deal if you if you buy more. But ten ten, their rates are astronomical. I would think. Mm -hmm. So, and Sandy's giving us some exposure. Maybe they're not talking about local issues, but nobody even talks local issues on our local talk station. <laughs> like, duh, they talk to roundtables. Yeah. And, oh, don't get me started on the round table. But, okay, so I came out and I said, you know what? I think it's a good deal. Because at mm -hmm. four grand, if he had 40 appearances, that's got to be a 1,000 mentions. A 1,000 mentions in going into the show, into the commercial, out of the commercial, at the beginning of the show, the promo for the show, the Facebook page of the show, you know, uh, Agar's tweets and stuff like mm -hmm. that. It's always Sandy, 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 Sandy Niagara Region, Niagara Region. So I think it's a good deal, but uh, it, it really brought to light this this idea of official capacity. So I'm yeah. interested on your take of when you're a counselor, when you're not a counselor, because let's face it, some of our um, integrity meters are off. Mm -hmm. Some of us don't really get uh, when we're acting. Our conscious is maybe a little bit um, conscious. What is it? A conscious? Conscience. <laughs> Sometimes isn't going, uh, yeah. that's inappropriate. Some people don't have that as yeah. much as others do. I kind of feel like if you live by your conscience, you're going to be okay. Yeah. But, you know, there's very few psychopaths out there that, you know, don't have a conscience. Mm -hmm. But you can't count on everyone for that. So then it comes back to the code, the code yeah. of conduct. And then the code brings in the integrity commissioner and how much time and money this is eaten up. Now, everyone's pissed off about this $44,000 you know, that Andy brought forward for a, a cost of, I think he was suing the region, mm -hmm. to stand up for his democratic right. Uh, that didn't go so so well. But 
the tweets that brought his integrity commissioner complaints were out there for a year. Yeah. At least for months and months and months. They were there sitting there. Anyone could have looked at it and got offended. And it wasn't until this political <laughs> movement that said, okay, let's go get them. We'll pull up this and we'll pull up that and we'll pull up this and some in the media, some in council, some in di- different di- districts. All of a sudden, you know how much that that one integrity complaint against Andy cost the taxpayers? Twenty five grand. Wow. Because Mascaren is talking to people. Hi, I want to call and talk about Andy offended me. Oh, go on. He talks for two hours. That's 800, 900 bucks. Yeah. Ding, 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 ding. Like, I don't get it. So, yeah, I appreciate your thoughts on this idea of, you know, you said watching football in the basement of my friend's house. Yeah. Uh, you know, Andy talks about being on a fishing boat up north. Uh, you know, an activist here in town here was talking about, you know, a certain counselor going topless on a beach, mm-hmm. how that was inappropriate. Really? In Ontario, yeah. So, so I think that there's two parts to this, and one is is the the 24 or you know the, your official capacity, and the other part is what the code dictates. Um, I tend to fall on the side of you. You are kind of on the clock more often than not. I, to be honest, 24 um, seven. I I fall on that side of that spectrum, and I think it's because you're you're expected to um you're held to a higher regard as a politician uh my classics background reminds me of there's a quote um caesar said you know caesar's Mm. wife has to be above reproach right even his family has to be you know the perfect it has optics right so uh, there's a story back and see he divorced one of his wives because there was an implication that um she was sleeping around she wasn't he knew she wasn't but he divorced her because of the implication. Caesar's wife has to be above reproach. Um, so obviously that's two thousand years ago, not you know. But that idea that politicians are held to a higher regard, um, I believe in that. I, I do. That said, um, then there there is what you were talking about, which is freedom of speech, which is they can be held to a higher regard, but they can also speak their mind, right? They shouldn't be attacked for going to church. I think Selena Volpatti made that point um, during the code discussions uh, at the region. She said, like, I'm Catholic. I go, you know, to to church, and my church believes in X, Y, and Z. I, like, I shouldn't have to defend that, right, in a political court of law, uh, because this is, this is my beliefs. And I was like, yeah, that's a, that's a fair point. So I feel like it's the issue with the code. So yes, I would say you're on more often than not, but I don't think the code should be attacking personality traits, like in that sense, like the or the belief structure. Mm-hmm. Um, as as we talked about earlier with my integrity complaints, I believe that there needs to be an oversight body, but it needs to be far better regulated. And actually, um, so I'm going to get into a different issue here a little bit. But when the first things about the tweets and Andy Petrowski came up, I actually asked at my city council for a review of our code of conduct. Um, so that's something that should be coming back at any time now, because that was over two years ago. We have an issue with backlogs and reports and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, that was, I asked for that almost immediately after I didn't really get any <laughs> press or anything. We didn't strike a committee, but, um, we're looking at reviewing ours and, and making sure that it does follow guidelines. I don't think I mentioned, uh, you know, follow the charter or anything like that. Well, but I think you need this. I think the code of conduct needs to be measured yeah. to the charter and it needs to be nationwide. I think that, yeah. you know, municipal governments all over the place are having a, a frustration with you know, what do you do with a Rob Ford when he goes rogue? Yeah. Um, you know, short of being incarcerated, there's no real function to get. So it, do we need a recall mechanism? But I just want to touch on this important issue too because I think it's, it's um, outrageous that, if you're a Christian and your belief is uh, traditional marriage, uh-huh. <laughs> that doesn't automatically make you a hate-filled homophobe. Yeah. If you're pro-life, doesn't mean automatically you hate women. Like, this is what the left is, is spewing these days, and this is why I'm so turned off with it. You know, we have a pro-life demonstration at the corner of Martindale and 4th Ave., they got their really graphic signs, and I'm not down yeah. with that, but there's certain freedom of speech in that, too. I know there's an argument of what, ha- well, what happens when I drive my 4-year-old or my 10-year-old by that goes, Mommy, why yeah. is there a dead baby on that placard? Well, placard, you wouldn't be using that term. but <laughs> um, It's very intelligent for you. So, you know, measuring 
the freedom of speech, the aspect of freedom of speech was so important, especially for the ideal uh, ideologues, for the racist, homophobic, intolerant assholes out there. Um, it's important, especially important for them so that they can show the world what an idiot they are. Mm. But the idea that you, that if you're pro-life, you hate women is just is so far whacked out. Like this is where the conversation stops. Oh, you hate women. So they're protesting on Martindale Road. Some jackass comes up shirtless with something written on his shirt, obviously looking for confrontation. He stomps all over their signs. This actually happened. I don't know if you heard this. It got reported. And, man, do we have a low threshold for what is news these days, especially locally? Ooh. Yeah. And I'm not saying this is news. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> Bad interviews. Um, the idea. So this guy comes up, and he stomps all over their signs and tries to ruin their signs. And, and he's probably having words with them, too. In my mind, it's like if you spit on someone, that's assault. If you throw mm -hmm. blood on someone, that's assault. If yeah. you take their sign out of their hand and put it on the ground, even though you maybe haven't even touched them, Threats? I think that yeah, yeah. I Threats think that could be threatening and it could be seen as assault. And I figure that's more assault, destroying a protester's sign at a mm -hmm. picket. Um, Imagine doing that at the picketers right now at Niagara College. No, you think that you get away with that. Oh no. <laughs> So, again, yeah. I think that's more assault. So then, you know, on social media, one of my favorite left-wing wackos who's like diversity everywhere, equality everywhere. We quotas. Like, mm. oh, come on, man. We can't legislate diversity and equality. We're not freaking equal for the first part. And let's talk about why, both with races and sexes. So he says, more of this. I'm like, more of what? Assault? Mm. Yeah. I'm like, dude, salt, uh, assault over free speech. Got it. And so uh, I hate women because, I, because I'm pro-life. I'm not pro-life. But because I came out in that argument in favor yeah. of the guy that was or No, the people that were demonstrating, yeah. not the guy that was assaulting them. Now I hate women. Hmm. So I, I find it uh, sickening, yeah. actually, how your limiting beliefs – being whatever they are, uh, being based in Christianity or whatever. And it's funny because if I say I'm in favor of traditional marriage, many would say I'm a homophobe, and I'm not. I mean, I love who you want. I think that's fine. Dolphins are gay in the wild. I think humans are gay naturally. You don't learn to be gay. You can't turn it off. Um, but this idea that as soon as you come out in favor of something, that that makes you a certain way is mm. is – is it makes me sick and it also stifles the conversation and more so now i think the left is engaging in this identity politics of you're a racist homophobe because you believe in this and like like you know yeah you know some you know i said the other day the uh the fundo the fundamental western values that we've assumed are valid mm. and everyone's like what how can you say well yeah like we have some fundamental Western values that have worked for a long time. And how can you prove it? Well, people want to come to these countries, yeah. North America. They want to live here for what reason? Because our assumptions yeah. about society and civilization have worked and are still working hundreds and hundreds of years and sometimes thousands of years. Well, and if you want to see where those are based, I know in the States, they, there's the one nation under God, of course. But uh, in our charter, we have the same thing, right? Our national anthem. God save this land. You know, mm -hmm. like it's it's very. But now we're uh, seeing that taken prayer taken out. It's yeah. soon the national anthem will be changed because it only you know deals with one God. I went to a hotel in Markham this this week. Um, wow, what an experience that was. Uh, you know, I like going to Toronto, but I'm I've never immersed in that much culture, and yeah. to be the minority. It's uh, an interesting. It's yeah, weird, I, man. Especially yeah. when it's like. If I go to Harlem, I guess you know you're certain you expect everyone to be black around you. But in Canada, like when I walk into McDonald's and I'm the only white guy there, and everyone's Asian or Chinese, I'm like, wow, this is yeah. weird. It's a learning experience. Uh, like it's different yeah. for me. Um, I spent some time in Scarborough doing some work and uh, in Brampton and and yeah, like there's many situations there, and it's it's it's. In 
I've learned a lot because <laughs> I try and engage and I try and learn. It's that's the reason I like the folk arts festival is when you go into one of those open houses and everyone's you know you're at the Armenian Center or everyone mm -hmm. you go to the Hindu Samaj or you know you go to the mosque. Um, I've been to the mosque a number of times. You know and mm -hmm. um, it's it's interesting. It's fascinating learning. Like, and that's I think the, the but the feeling, feeling you get. I think that's what you're saying. The feeling you get like you feel something when you're in a room and you're oh wow I'm the only you know, white guy or whatever. Yeah. You get that feeling. Um, I'm not saying, like, I, I don't know. I'm just I'm well, interested by it. Well, as privileged white, uh, good-looking yeah. single men, <laughs> uh, we don't get the chance to, to feel that very often. And there's nothing, that, I'm not trying to put myself in in, the, yeah. in that position because there's really no, there's no hate or intolerance that's coming off you in, in Markham at a, at a McDonald's in the morning just because you're the only white guy in there. But right. in the room, Courtyard Marriott, there was a Holy Bible and a Book of Mormon in the drawer. Really? I'm like, what? Oh, wow. I've never seen another religious book, and this is yeah. another failing. I can't remember the speaker, but it just struck such a chord with me. You know, universities are failing us, and I think they're about to change for the better mm. rapidly soon. Um, knowledge is everywhere. We can watch university lectures online mm -hmm. for nothing. Um, and I think a lot of that is where we'll be educated. Mm -hmm. And you want to have a standardized test? You want to watch all these things and go write the test? You should be able to get a degree. But what, what uh, our learning, our, especially our higher learning institutions, but even in an elementary school, why don't we teach more more world religions? Mm -hmm. Because if I don't understand what the Muslim creed is or what they believe in, then I can't have any respect for it. And if I just yeah. grew up Christian my whole life, even though you know I grew up Catholic, and I consider that. Is that Christian? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, this is the the failing of our, in, our learning institutions is teach world teach them all. Yeah. To, you know you're not going to have to in depth into all of them, but that way when we roll up on a Chinese guy who claims to be Hindu or whatever, I think it's Hindu one of the predominant religions over there. At least you got a background mm -hmm. into what makes him tick and what his uh, core values are because just. Being in our little silos is just making us more racist and, and intolerant, which, mm -hmm. you know, I, I've said many times before, I think is human's natural proclivity, mm -hmm. one of my favorite new words. Ooh. Yeah. So, and, and it also fosters a discussion. So it just seems like most of the time now, uh, the left and the right is just like, oh, no, mm -hmm. you're hate filled. You're, a, you're this, you're that. And then the discussion stops. So, you know, we really need to keep the discussion going. The left does things really well that the right doesn't do well. Mm -hmm. And the right do a lot of things well that the left doesn't do well. And we've talked about this on other shows, so I won't beat it up. But these are, these are personality types that have been documented over many decades at least as we try and understand our mm -hmm. own minds, our own consciousness. Like what the hell? What does a consciousness serve us? There's not many other animals that have consciousness, but we're finding yeah. it in chimps now. If you put lip lipstick on a chimp and show him his picture in a mirror, he'll wipe it off. Hmm. So he has to be conscious at some level. Maybe not that he's going to die in 20 years like we are, <laughs> like we, you know? Yeah. But there's, uh, and I just find here we don't even know where we came from for sure. There's no, yeah. there's a theory of evolution. That's why they call it a theory because there's so many damn holes in it. And then we have, uh, you know, books like the Bible that are sometimes metaphorical stories, I think, that, sure. you know, that are told in ways that we can understand. Jesus literally talks in parables. Like, they're yeah. literally, here's the story I'm going to make up for you to prove a point. Mm -hmm. Right? <laughs> He's not. A, Jesus isn't a literalist. But then we will defend to the death yeah. our God that we don't even know exists. Mm -hmm. Or we don't know is the right God. But we will fight to the death to defend our God. And we don't even know where we came from for sure. We could be an alien ant farm, <laughs> you know? And I think that's an interesting concept. But the, the discussion needs to be continued. And I, yeah. I'm not in favor of anything that shuts it down by saying you're a racist homophobe because you said this. Uh, I made the joke, you know, if I tweet out a naked picture of me sitting on a stool with <laughs> my legs that. open, no one's going to call that pornographic. So the yeah. media does have to have a responsibility of, okay, and I fell for it too. Um, but you don't, uh, you do, I mean, we're so, all in this together yeah. and we're getting nowhere by fighting each other. And this is what Trump yeah. has brought to the forefront. And I think 
uh, this transgender discussion has really mm -hmm. brought um, the feminists and, and some of the people that are struggling with sexual identity out, and I don't understand it. I'm learning right here, and then so talking to you, I could yeah, me too. completely to. ignorant of some of these facts. I only have some beliefs that are hardwired into me and have been you know yeah. conditioned into me by society that I'm wrestling with because I'm like, ooh, yeah, ten year old Charlie. I don't but, know. So two man. things that we were just we touched on a few times that I wanted to expand on. I don't know yep. how we're doing for time, but um, great, the uh, you were just talking about the media and locally and how you know you've had some issues with it of course on the radio mm -hmm. and all different levels i have to say so far in my i've only been in this gig now almost three years like just just under three mm -hmm. years um i've been pretty lucky i think at council with um our both our reporters from both our major you know karina walters from the standard and, and melinda cheevers and before her uh, scott ross from niagara this week they are i don't know what you think of their writing but like it's very here's what happened if you look at their npca article just this morning from last night that was a complicated two and a half hour issue and it was like here's what happened i would say that both sides of the coin should be happy with that article like at least i read it and i went you know that's as a factual account of what went yeah, down. yeah. And, and so i would say that with at least my experience uh even at 610 you know they've invited me on for certain issues hey you move this motion about facer street um, why don't you come on? So, like, I feel like I've been given a pretty fair shot. Um, but then there, as we talked about Andy and, and like, the kind of constant, right. uh, you know, pushing on them. So um, I, I feel like I've been pretty uh, lucky with, with media and locally. So that was mm -hmm. just the one point. And I sound like I'm pondering right now trying to get press. But uh, if you're watching, you know, write, <laughs> a, nice, write a nice article. No, I'm um, not getting on 610 <laughs> anytime soon. But uh, just no, it's just, we, I, I think I can look back. Advertising. Um, something I just mentioned to you, I, I'm in the process of redoing my website. Um, and one of the things I'm doing on it is just collect, compiling past news articles. Um, obviously, a little bit of self-promotion, obviously, for myself. But mm -hmm. um, like here are the news articles. And just going through them was a nice little... Um, look back at you know what's been accomplished, what's been done at council, and and uh, I would say those articles. I even put in some of them about uh, where we had some budget squabbles that were quite vocal, you know, mm -hmm. between myself and the budget chair and, and the mayor. Um, wow. You know, oh, really? oh, I'd love to be in the room yeah. for that. But so I'm just saying, Can you like come to budget committees were... at uh, committee meetings of, of budget at the city. Pardon? Are, Are they public? Those yeah. meetings? Yeah, yeah, they're public. Um. And they're live stream now. Oh, okay, cool. Um, which is great. That's that's a new thing this year, I think. Um, but anyway, so like oh, I put those articles. You mean you and Cisco and the mayor don't see eye to eye on every subject all the time? <laughs> you have a, your have own you not seen these articles? <laughs> <laughs> have you, you shut off my mic the one time? <laughs> you got mad that I used a PowerPoint presentation. So, yeah, those are legitimate articles that I put on my website because I wanted to give like you know here's here's the account. But even those articles where clearly there's one side and there's another. I was quite happy with, right? Like there's an issue where my microphone got shut off or, you know, I was dressed down for using a PowerPoint or, you know, um, some pretty serious, like, you know, controversial back and forth issues. And I was happy with the reporting. I'll say that. Like it was very mm -hmm. much this happened. Make your own kind of decision. Yeah. <laughs> I, and I guess uh, you have to draw the line somewhere. But, you know, yeah. uh, as it relates to, you know, you going on the radio, I absolutely uh, appreciate you being given the opportunity to go on mm -hmm. and speak about something, but that's pro it's basic pro propaganda, right? Mm -hmm. So if they're talking to you yeah, about a, a motion that you're bringing forward, you're going to speak to purpose. all the reasons why it comes, <laughs> and then often what we don't get is the other side of the story. And you know what? Yeah. For all I care, I don't really care what Mike Britton thinks about his own yeah. measure, his own motion. I do care what the callers think. Because right. sometimes the callers can call in and go, you know what, I've known Mike since blah blah blah, and you know what, here's some, a relative part of the a relevant part of the conversation yeah. you missed here, and it could be all BS, but at yeah. least, you know, so I, I'm problem. more like more callers, less host, yeah. makes for a better show, but uh, well, no. so just the budget issue was a great example where the radio I think really helped me here was, um, there was this issue about, okay, so there's the, the city's tax rate and then there's the blended tax rate. I don't want to go too far into the weeds here, but, mm -hmm. you know, there's the city increases our 
our expenses and our budget by so much and there's that percentage and then you have to factor in the school board and the region right. and that gets your final property tax right. which is called the blended rate well for years and years and you can look back at the standard and Niagara this week and bullet news when it existed and everyone they 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 bullet news. i'm just saying you wow. can look back and they always <laughs> presented the um the the city tax rate here's the city tax rate well two years ago we had a bad budget year and there were legitimate reasons for it so i wasn't even actually arguing that point but i was arguing transparency which was we were now advertising the blended tax rate it was the first thing you see when you open the budget book because the the that was the year the region came in at zero percent and it made it look like uh, we did a very good job Mm -hmm. so our rate was five percent it was a five percent tax increase with Mm -hmm. the inflation being two and so anyway i said that's wrong I said, we should not be showing the blended tax rate when for years and years we've been showing the city tax rate. That was my argument. And nobody would listen to me. I, and maybe this is a little bit about the media, but I said it in the budget chambers. I actually, I actually called Grant LaFleche, funny enough. Um, I thought he was, I called Grant LaFleche because I Uh, thought he uh, would be the one to, um, (laughs) I thought he would be the one to want to like sink his teeth in the story because I, I said it in budget chambers. Nobody picked it up. I said it, you know, uh, again, nobody picked it up. And so I called Grant, and I thought he'd sink his teeth into this. And, and his response was simply, well, I don't cover St. Catherine's City Council, um, so maybe talk to Karina, right? That was his response. And it was funny because about a week later, after I did get press, he wrote an article on me, which was funny. But just well, to maybe say— maybe Grant LaFleche, did you say? Maybe <laughs> he's just like an opinion— maybe he's a columnist, not a reporter. Yeah. I, I thought I maybe— because I thought he could expand into a Niagara— because the year that the region what came in at zero, other municipalities started doing the blended rate too. Um, Pelham did it, I think. Fort Erie did it. Like other cities started doing that mm-hmm. same propaganda in this sense. So anyway, after all this, and I wasn't getting any press, like or I wasn't getting any knowledge on this. I wanted people to know it's five percent. Because how do you call your counselor and say I'm not okay with five percent if you don't hear the five percent number? So then I called up uh, six ten, and they went, Yeah, come on, talk to us, mm-hmm. right? And after that, there was articles in Standard. There was the article. Because they don't have to pay you to come on. It's free content. <laughs> They're thinking, Bell won't pay for a new host out here. So yeah. I'll get Mike Britton to come on. But I'm just saying, have to pay him. I have to thank, you know, 6 because after 6-10. that to time that I was on the radio, they weren't all great articles, like in the sense that they were saying, you know, Mike Britton blindsides the budget chair and, uh, you know, he goes up and is this the breaking of the Cisco 5? And the, hey, Doug Herod wrote an article calling me the Yoko Ono of Who? the Cisco 5. Doug. <laughs> is, is he a but comedian? Anyway, yeah, he yeah. is actually, I think. But, he thinks um, he is. Anyway, so it wasn't all good press, but the 5% number was out there. And after I went on that radio, um, we knew about the 5%. Now it ended up still being 5%, but my mission was accomplished, which was transparency in that number. And then um, it finally got reported after 610 picks it up because 610 can't say something yeah. without, and vice versa. Yeah. I mean, 610 takes a so. lot of their news from the print in this yeah. town, too, because the print's got a little bit more resources as far as sending a guy out mm-hmm. to do some investigation. <laughs> I mean, when we found out the bridge was being, I was oh, at the station yeah. when the bridge, when they, when they stopped working the bridge and I called trip and I'm like, Hey, I didn't know him at the time. I still don't know him. What's up with the bridge? Oh, we're shutting it down for Easter. I'm like, it's Tuesday. <laughs> Easter's not for four or five days. What do you mean? And yeah. then it came out that there were some, some stability issues. So I don't have time for, you know, the propaganda yeah. so much, but yeah. Anyway, that was just my little media rant. Uh, the other issue, I don't know if you had one queued up, but, uh, we were talking a little bit about um, women, and, and you talked about that one uh, culture where the women were all working together, the 15. and they. Well, do. this is in every culture. Um, but women were something together. about women in politics, I've been, I've been looking into this a little bit recently. Uh, our, our Association of Municipalities of Ontario, it's the, this body that kind of represents all of us, mm-hmm. uh, put out some literature on how we can help improve the number of women in politics. And I was looking at the statistics from our last election in Niagara, St. Catharines in particular. And I, I found a really interesting statistic, which for me um, is exciting. And it's that the percentage of women that won versus ran and the percentage of men that won versus ran is the same, 33%. Mm. The problem is that nine women ran, this mm-hmm. is a regional city, and three won. And 40, you know, whatever, 50 it was, men ran and, you know, the, the rest of them uh, won. So it, the percentage, though, was the same, which is exciting for me because I think that if we can get more to, women to run, it's not that 
there's the there's that anti-woman like we don't want to vote for women um you know sexism exists sexism is still a problem but the the fact is if we get more women to run i think more women will be elected and that's a really and i think a society as a whole will be better what i'm yeah. afraid of is quotas and i will say that i think that uh, and for yeah. places like the the united states um and maybe it's too simple of an analogy but before uh, clinton lost which i lightly predicted I mean, <laughs> the day before i said to the girl i was getting water from i'm like oh wait till you wake up tomorrow and donald trump is president <laughs> i was half joking half not yeah. um women are smarter than men boys are stupid <laughs> they they're run and, and women just don't have any mm. fucking idea what it, it means to think about sex thousands of times a day they don't have that problem we have this thing called testosterone that makes us stupid and aggressive and and more sexually driven i think um <laughs> I don't know where you're going with that one, but my point was women in politics. That's what I was. Yeah, and I think it makes about. for a softer, <laughs> more tolerant society. Yeah. Well, so but, yeah. Well, the point I was making is, oh. I think women, again, there's they have more things that are important to them. Family mm-hmm. is important. If you're a 30 year old woman and you don't have a child right now, guess what? Your next most likely yeah. step in your life is going to be that you make consciously. There's very few women like Oprah Winfrey with no babies. I'm going to have a career because this is the most important thing a woman can do is have a baby. Now, some women don't want to have babies, but most of them crave. We all want family. What are you going to do mm-hmm. when you're 50 years old? If you don't have any kids, you have no one around you. Mm-hmm. So I think, Women are, are emotionally more uh, attentive to the fact that what's really important. I struggle mm-hmm. with running for the region. I see the region as a, like a, a place where I could possibly be elected for the first time because I've always run green, and I've never really run to win. Right. You know, even running for mayor was, was just to make sure that I exposed Walter for who he was. Uh, I, I didn't want him to be elected and me sitting on the sidelines going, oh, man, if I could have stopped that. You know, and my – my life didn't end when Walter was elected. And, you know, I, I have no problem with Walter personally if he wants to bury the hatchet. But for whatever reason, that's, you know, he doesn't see me as an ally or anybody that really cares about his community. Or otherwise, he would plug me in somehow. I struggle with running with the region because my mother from the other side, you know, she died seven years ago. And I, I've been on boards, many boards before. And her take on it would be, why do you want to sit with these coconuts? <laughs> with these people that don't really have anything better to do. You know, the people that are that are really killing it out there, that are really have good businesses, they don't have time to run for the region. So what do you get as a, as a candidate? Uh, what do you get as a, a candidate for a potential election? Now, you know, you're a young guy, and, you know, you're putting your heart and soul into this, but most people have businesses and jobs, yeah. and they can't afford. And I think on some level, women look at this and go, I'm not fucking going to sit up with those turkeys because they're stupid. Yeah. They don't get it. And I'm way too intelligent to be with them. So I think there's a whole bunch of natural reasons why. And don't get there's no gender pay gap. Like, stop it. Women are making more money. And the younger women are making more money than the younger men right now in lots of areas. Well, so, so just but, the, the note of of the women personality on council Um on city council. We have two. And uh, Sandy Bellows uh, was elected you know, the same time I was. And she's actually stood up a few times uh, when maybe she it'll did? be a contentious issue, and she'll say, oh, "I've never seen her stand she'll up or say, say anything." I you don't know, like. you. <laughs> I'm just trying to. I want to get this right because <laughs> she has this. Uh, she she one time just said, "You know, if you boys can't play nice in the sandbox, sexist, right?" But um, she said that before, right? When we're really in a contentious issue, and uh, it's almost she brings us back to reality, right? We're we're blowing something out of proportion, you know, yeah. or whatever the case may be. Well, that's where she wasn't men. able to make it last night at the the NPCA, but um, issue. But I feel like she's been that that um, kind of calming, um, nurturing mother figure. Yeah, like I, I call sexist. I call her my political mom <laughs> because she actually went to high school with my actual mom. 
and oh, uh, yeah, so it's small world. It seems everybody went to Grantham High School in the city with, <laughs> with my mother. Um, but anyway, so they're they're I think the same age or within one year. So when we go to events and whatever, she's my political mom. I'm the same age as her son. Yeah, it's kind of awesome. fun. We have a good relationship, and uh, uh, she she definitely does bring that reason. Okay, it's eleven thirty-eight. I got to get you out of here for a nooner, but uh, just talk to yeah. me about what's coming up. You got Buchanan House, uh, dog park, picnic tables, first oh, yeah, vote. You want to you want to hit any of that stuff? Uh, uh, how we get a hold of you? Well, or, I mean, you got as much time as you want. You want to blow yeah. your lunch? Let's keep going. <laughs> I'll spend a few minutes. I don't mean blow your coming. lunch. I mean yeah. blow your lunch date. <laughs> no, I don't mean blow your lunch date. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, Did I mentioned I'm I'm a comedian. A too. little bit. A little I'm going to put that on my Twitter feed so that I can say anything I want and these outrageous statements <laughs> won't be um, tarring me as a snowflake or an intolerant, racist, homophobic yeah. bigot. But so uh, some ward issues, and I can't yeah. believe we went, what, two hours without talking about Facer yeah. Street, which is something I talk about in every interview, it seems. Facer but. Street? Oh, <laughs> Roberto's Pizza. Yeah, I know Roberto's Facer too. Street. But, um, as far as what's coming up next is uh, the Buchanan House. Uh, there was just an article actually in the paper about a partnership the city struck with Links for Greener Learning, which is an organization that helps do community gardens. Uh, they work with kids. They teach. It started off actually uh, teaching new Canadians, uh, immigrants, you know, how to have sustainable gardens and things like that. And the city's entered into a partnership this past year at Buchanan House, which is the building uh, just across the street from Laura Secord. Um, yeah, right. And so they put in some gardens there. They had this wonderful uh, kids program called uh, Eco um, Eco Kids, and it was like a summer mm -hmm. camp kind style thing, and they had workshops. I visited it about a week in, and I was blown away by how much the kids know. They would know way more about how to plant and what you know the nutrients that the things need, and they learned things about you know how do you protect certain plants from certain bugs. You plant like onions around the outside of the garden. It was just it was really a, an amazing learning experience. So. Uh, just last night at council, we approved a five-year lease with them uh, for that area. They're going to expand. I'd like to see um, an actual community garden where people can go, like, rent plots there. So we're mm. in talks about that. And um, it's really an exciting initiative that the St. Catherine City Council has done a lot for, like, greening initiatives. And I know that's something close to you, uh, to your heart. And so that was one of them that is, is in the midst of expansion. It's really exciting in my ward. So... Um, I forget what else I put on. Dog there. park. I'm oh yeah, say. so well, there's like a leash free park. Yeah, that's uh that's been something that's been in discussions for a while. Uh, there's a pals community group. Uh, I, a, yeah, pals. Preservation of agricultural land society. No, um, it's a uh, it's puppies. A, it's a dog. <laughs> yeah, group. Um, that help with the you know the downtown dog park and we're going and they, it's kind of like an advocacy group for this. And I spoke with them a little while ago and they'd like to see one in the north end. And so we're in the process of dog owners. <laughs> <laughs> privileged white dog owners next thing you know we're but, gonna be paying for free yeah. leash free parks for them but anyway so we're trying to find a location uh it needs to be there's some issues we got to make sure drainage is right and and there's water access and things like that you got a place buchanan was an, an idea um just behind where the community gardens is is, oh, is putting man. one in there um, there's been others discussed, actually, the infamous uh, Sunset Beach, but I don't think that's going to work out. <laughs> um, oh, no. Carl but... Vanderkube would be straight <laughs> up your back with that. But I'm just saying, like, I'm I'm interested. Leash so free dog if park. You have... I don't got a dog. Yeah. If we have any <laughs> listeners out there who have suggestions or we have no would listeners. like to see that. Um, yeah. So that's something that uh, I, I, I'm i working on, hopefully, within the next I want to touch on first vote before I get you out of here. But, again, yeah. tell me how great I was at Seacourt. Oh, I had the story. To tell. Oh, was that um... – <laughs> Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> And we joke. <laughs> I was at uh, PAC. No. Um, the Artist Center. A Niagara Artist Center. NAC. 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 PAC. Yeah. I always get them confused. <laughs> I was with a couple of uh, younger musician friends of mine. And uh, we were on the roof. Uh, it's not roofing, right? Yeah, no. We were, uh, it was a concert. <laughs> uh, I think... Um, yeah, I heard, I heard the about orchestra that. was what uh, I can't remember what they're called now. I, I bought their CD and it's pretty good. <laughs> so we're up there and this not kid, a thirty year old guy maybe. They're the worst. He's actually yeah, <laughs> he's got his back. Well, you're actually the most. And I told you, it's a twenty six year old. You are the yeah. most uh, populist age group on the planet right now. Yeah, you guys should be running shit. You guys <laughs> should be them. So this kid, um, he's got his back to the stage and he's standing with his buddy looking at me i'm looking at him looking at the stage i don't even know if anyone was playing and 
And he says loud enough so I can hear it, I know this guy. I'm like, nope. There's no way you know me. Because it's just a joke. Because like, I, I do have a public profile. Yeah. And, I, yeah, and you know, it, through things like this, elections and radio shows and stuff like this. And he says, uh, your name, Jim? I'm like, sometimes. <laughs> Fannin. Fannin, right? Fannin, yeah. Yeah. Jim Fannin, yeah. I shake his hand. I can't remember his name now. He goes, uh, you left a mark on my heart. I'm like, I did? <laughs> he says, yeah, can I tell you how? I'm like, oh, please do. Like, there's nothing more important. Like, I love people, even yeah. though I say I hate them. You know, the, <laughs> you know I've been yeah. in business a long time. People are frustrated in politics. You know, I, I hate how we're so mean to each other. Women are mean to each other. Men are, you know, well, men, <laughs> we're mean to everyone. Um, he said, yeah, um, you're a Green Party candidate. I go, Laura Secord. Because I did a lot of debating, but it was, Secord was the one that was very well uh, yeah. connected. Uh, Cross there yeah. had me come in and talk to her social science um, class yeah. early in the day. Um, and uh, so this kid, not again, kid, said, you know what? We, uh, similar to your story, you know? Mm-hmm. And yeah, I was, I'm, you know, I've never been the same since, and this is how I'm like, Wow, because that's all you want to do is make a positive difference yeah. for someone, even if it's, even if it's antagonistic or whatever. Like somehow I got through this kid. Yeah, and you know maybe it was the weed thing or the whatever. But like I owe debate all these guys up there. You and, did very well. I remember, yeah, and it's because I know my shit. Like I know the yeah. Green Party policy, and most of it makes sense. And if it didn't make sense, the liberals and the conservatives would stop adopting all our stuff. Like. Yeah. Uh, carbon tax and uh, you know carbon fee and dividend and, like not neutral uh, revenue neutral stuff like that. So and I love the kids. Like I I don't care. Like I get in staring contests at the grocery store in line with kids. You know like I I love them especially the small ones right. The high school ones I have a different love for them because they're they're different. They need a different conversation right. Mm. And so I I really appreciate. Uh, you saying that because uh, that for me, like I'm just so yeah. passionate. I'm off the uh, I'm 99th percentile in compassion uh, or uh, enthusiasm. I think it was. <laughs> uh, you should take the test. It's uh, it's really good. So what's this? Just before we get you out of here, first vote. Yeah. So it's a project um, that kind of came out of the uh, youth forum that the city of St. Catharines did for the first time. Um, just to give you some background, the city used to have a mayor's youth advisory committee. Uh, right. When we rejigged the committees, um, the mayor decided to drop the youth advisory committee and replace it with a youth forum, something that I helped, you know, uh, plan, uh, just kind of sat on, chaired the committee um, and let the others do the work, but I was there. Um, and it was a great, you know, forum. We talked about civic engagement. We talked about the importance of getting involved in your community. And... It was a it was an amazing day, and at the end of it, one of the participants who I knew actually from he's in a local band. I don't know if you know Tuscany. Do you know Tuscany? I don't think I've heard those okay. guys. I might so, know the guys. Yeah. But. So the the guys, uh, um, Nico, uh, Tripodi, and the the Tripodi. Yeah, and okay. uh, Sophia De Luca. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Those so, names sound familiar. But um, anyway, so they're in a band called Tuscany. A little promotion for you yeah, guys. Yeah, local music, um, Niagara Rocks. Has but anyway, so yeah. Nico was at this youth forum. Uh, he's, a, he's a grade 12 student. Uh, and he said, this was an amazing day. Loved it. What next? You know, what do I do next? How do I keep getting involved? He's he's incredibly involved. He's a, a, a student trustee at the Catholic uh, District uh, mm-hmm. School Board. Like, he's just a very involved kid. And so um, I thought about it. I was like, okay, like, what next? What, what are we doing? And so um, him and there's another uh, um, girl that who was a speaker at the uh, youth forum. Uh, she was a speaker. Um, she was in grade 12 then. Now she's in po- poli sci, of course, near and dear to my heart at uh, Brock University. And we've kind of banded together and we're trying to create this conference this uh, to engage grade 12 students in particular because we came to the realization just the three of us sitting around kind of talking like this but without cameras that <laughs> there's no cameras gr- here great what are you talking about grade 12 <laughs> students the next provincial election is in june of next year and half of grade 12 students are going to be old enough to vote in that election i you never experienced that, that. To 16 by the way but like i've never experienced that because i have a late birthday right so like yeah. i was you know but me too half of half of grade 12 students can vote in the next election and that's the, the percentage that will 
is going to be very low, right? Maybe like it's that's a why I take it into the region. All these guys that I was training, like you know, guys <laughs> exactly. like you, are now old enough to vote, and they remember I'm the <laughs> weed guy. Yeah, we want so, Bannon in there. <laughs> anyway, we're trying to create a program where we can actually speak to the grade twelve, um, speak to the grade twelves, show them the importance of how this affects them. You know how that. Um, politics in general. This is specifically on politics as opposed to the broader civic engagement conversation. But um, we want to we want to create a program where it it shows them the importance, gets them involved, and gets them educated. Because you know, I remember being in grade twelve, as I said before the d debate that you were at. I wasn't engaged, like uh, really. And there, you're not sitting at home watching political ads and researching <laughs> platforms, and yeah. you know. And it's been two years since civics class. If you're in grade twelve. So you probably haven't thought oh, about politics why? for two civics years. class comes grade up. ten. Oh, it's only grade ten. Grade ten. Civics. Oh, yeah. So this is the thing. So we're trying to um, kind of re re-energize that in grade twelve. You know, if if somebody got sparked in grade ten, maybe re-energize that or whatever the case may be. And 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 we want that to sounds like a great try program, and create. Yeah. So it's very preliminary. Like nothing's confirmed. Okay. We've had some preliminary conversations with the DSBN. Um, you know, I, I'd like to involve Brock University. You know, so we're. Well, it's exciting. Let um, me know if I can help. Yeah, definitely. I'm not um, all that more, <laughs> I'm all that affiliated with the Greens anymore. I don't have anything to do with the local association. Yeah. I'm not a member provincially or federally anymore. I I watch as it goes, and still, the, my, you know, my favorite political party probably because they speak to me more as far as policy goes, and I think they're very forward thinking. But uh, just so you know, I can come in and be <laughs> unbiased. Well, not unbiased, but not yeah. affiliated. Yeah. Um, but uh, no, and Mike, I really appreciate your time. Yeah. I know you got to get going to your lunch meeting, well, but thank you. Um, this was fun. if there's anything I can do <laughs> to help out, man, I just, you know, it's, there's nothing more gratifying than, mm. than saying uh, to be to be able to say, you know, I had a hand in that, I had a part mm. in that. And it's not about the ego. It's just making this a better place for all of us. Yeah. And, you know, I appreciate your generosity and your time and coming in and talking about some things that are, and letting me go off on my own tangents. That's uh, cool. But, uh, the bottom line is, if we stop talking, and we and we and we and we go into these camps, whether it be male and female or left and right, which are really, I think, just um, we got a magnifying glass on top of them right now. And before we burn up, I think we we need to come together a little bit more and just realize that as humans, mm. we're far more alike than we are different. And I think we've kind of we don't look our neighbor in the eye anymore. We don't help him out when his basement floods and, you know, and maybe they do. I was always surprised when I moved to the country. Man, people, they come from miles around on horseback to pull you out <laughs> of the ditch, you know, type of thing. It was a yeah. different kind of community. So my hope is just to make myself a better version of myself so that I'm able to go into the world and make the world maybe a little bit better place. And if we stop, you know, just uh, being self-absorbed and obsessed with the other guy, and why we hate them so much, yeah. which is a natural thing, I think. And um, I think one of, the, one of the few people that I, I feel like admits I'm trying to manage that natural mm -hmm. hate in my heart because, you know. Anyway, I appreciate your time. And, uh, yeah, we can do it again anytime. Yeah, I could talk you... all about the, you know, <laughs> more about, you know, why what you were just saying about people and, and the, the generosity of people in the country. I can tell you about my Scotland trip. Oh man, I can mm -hmm. talk about hours for that, but um, yeah, no, I, 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 I want to keep it so that it's interesting for <laughs> anybody that but, happens to, to yeah. watch, but uh, no, I appreciate I... this because like, I, I really believe I've been trying to look at, you know, what's my, why, you know, why, oh, why am I here? Yeah. I've been doing that a lot lately. Like, and, yeah. and um, you know, I believe that everyone should have a voice in shaping our community. And so, I'll talk to anyone, even even Jim. Even Fannin. Jim. Fannin. <laughs> and just so you know, uh, I had Petrosky on because he's most controversial, and I find some of the issues that he's uh, going after uh, very interesting. And then he recommended Tony Quirk, mm -hmm. and then hey, I see you at church every couple of weeks and whatnot. Yeah. And um, you know, I, I, I'm I'm having more time. It's funny because you know I call my lefty buddy and he blows me off because I roll with bigots, <laughs> and then I call my righty buddy and. I have lunch with him the next day. Yeah. And I said, bro, I'm having a hard time here. He's like, what? I said, I'm agreeing with you and your <laughs> tribe more than anybody anymore. He says, that's okay. You know, yeah. hey, hey, you dumb lefty. I told you you'd come over and come correct. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, I got a lot of time for anyone. And then you, like I said, uh, you know, I got a lot of time for lately people that don't, that I don't agree with. And, you know, I'm guilty of, uh, texting you from the gallery, yeah, you know, yeah. before I speak, even taunting you, <laughs> like, 
how can you support this? I campaigned on it. I'm not going to turn my back on it now. I'm like, I'm praying for you, you idiot. <laughs> like, that's a, and I'm yeah. thinking, oh, that's, I didn't say idiot, but I'm like, I'm praying for wisdom for you. Yeah. I remember exactly what that, yeah. it's kind of a cut, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, oh, please vote this yeah. down. And if you don't, I'm just praying to God that you have some, yeah. that you have a little bit of wisdom because obviously you don't have it now if you disagree <laughs> with me. Uh, but yeah, I appreciate your time and everything All you're right. doing. And uh, if you got something that you think needs to be, aired and talked about in depth and give me a shout and we'll get her out there sounds good mike britton appreciate Thank you. it just tell us uh, how do we get a hold of you put your phone number or your email address and everything yeah out there. um well so easily you can google mike britton um i'll have a website up soon as i was mentioning uh, mike britton.ca very simple um it, i have a website now it's it's awful but uh, hopefully i'm going to be publishing a new one within the next couple of days um, but on the city website, there's my number, there's my email, mbritton at stcatherines.ca, all very uh, straightforward. And if you have any suggestions on uh, anything you'd like to see, anything you'd like to talk to me about, um, it just if you're looking at getting involved, I've had a few of those great conversations. So, um, yeah, hopefully I'll hear from all of you. All right, Facebook Live, we're getting out of here. Thanks to Mike Britton, and thanks to you guys for watching. Mm -hmm. It'll be up on YouTube later. Peace out.